All right, everyone, welcome back to another episode of Speedruns from the Crypt, your bi-weekly horror hot picks. Hope you're all doing good today and hope you're all doing well. I am your host, Dicus, and we have a fun set of games for you tonight. So diving into what we are doing, we're going to be taking a look at the Silent Hill franchise. Uh, for those of you who do not know, uh, Silent Hill recently had its first few games in what is quite literally about 10 years. I think about 12, about 10, 12 years. Uh, we recently got the release of a game called Silent Hill The Short Message. So today we'll actually be taking a look at a variety of Silent Hill runs. Also, sorry about that. That is my alarm to wake up. <laughs> There's. So that will be the plan today. Uh, to open things up, we'll be doing Silent Hill 2 as well. We're going to be having a few other runs like Silent Hill Origins, Silent Hill 4, and Silent Hill The Short Message itself as the speedrun community has developed to a point where the run is now presentable. Uh, anyway, I'll actually be showing you Silent Hill 2 to start things off, so uh, how about we uh, get started in a moment here? Uh, I do want to uh, let uh, let Richard know that I do need to close the game, uh, and then I'll just call time in a very easy way on my end. Uh, Silent Hill 2 is a very particular setup. If you're trying to run this game, uh, I'm using the PC port, and it can be a bit of a pain because of how this game runs. Alright, let's see... You have to like do a bunch of things where you make it single core in task manager and then you also have to make sure the intro plays out in full. All righty. So, uh, ready to count it down? We can count it down. Three, two, one, go! All righty. So, Silent Hill 2 is a classic game. I don't actually know if I have audio or not on the game. It might, I can fix it in a moment it's not showing up. Uh, I think rebooting the game might cause some issues, but I can probably pause the game really quick to fix it if need be. In fact, I don't think I'm saying it. Give me one run. Hopefully, all timing does not break it. Should be fine, I think. Uh-oh. Oh, wait, wrong button. I think it's fine. No, I don't think it's audible. Either way, the first few minutes of the game are running to the town. I'm sure someone will let me know if the game is heard or not. Okay, cool. Uh, give me one moment here. I think I should be able to go here. Uh, let's do it like... Thank you for being patient, everyone. Let's see. There we go. Audible now. Uh, one more thing, though. One more thing. There you go. Okay. Sorry about that. This game has some weird quirks when you uh, reboot the game. Uh, Silent 2 is a wonderful PC port, isn't it? <laughs> All right, anyway, Silent 2, let's just kind of go over some of the basics. This is hard, hard. What does that mean? Hardest difficulty, hardest puzzle difficulty. All the puzzles are hard, all the enemies are hard. Everything is hard. Uh, this means that, um, you know, things take more bullets to kill, you die faster, a bunch of stuff like that. And now, and now, now it works out. Uh, in the intro, we're mainly running into the town. We're going to be opening up with a very minor skip here. Um, I... It's kind of a toss if I get it. Uh, it takes like maybe half a second you get it, so it's not a huge amount. I like half a second, one second. Uh, you can mash pause there. It skips that cutscene a little bit faster, which is kind of silly, I suppose, but fun. But right now, it's me running on into the town. Uh, Silent Hill 2 as well is a game that I think has been ran for quite a while. Uh, there's been a lot of different categories ran, a lot of different changes. Uh, so we'll be seeing some of the differences of hard, hard. Um, what else do we have when we run into the town? You may be wondering, why am I saving the game repeatedly? You may know this from, uh, you know, various speedruns you can show into this. However, saving the game actually gives you more stamina, and it gives you just other effects later in the game that will help. The primary one right now is the stamina increase. Instead of running and having stamina dip, I will constantly be at 100%. 100% is, you know, good, because that means we get to run faster. So that is definitely ideal. 
Uh, as well, we'll be seeing our first major skip of the game and why the PC port is the desired thing to run on, which is going to be text skipping. Our, I, I don't know if there's actually an official name, but you can get the text hung up here. There's no reason to go back and look for Mary. The idea behind this is by mashing save consistently, I can actually hold the text the entire time. I don't have to worry about any drop off. Um, however, the problem is if I stop pushing it, the text will go away. So what the text is going to do is it's going to put the game in a sort of pause, meaning everything in the game pauses. It might be uh, items, it'll be um, effects, just any of the minor game things. Uh, this includes things like cutscene triggers and enemy spawns too, which are going to be much more beneficial to what we want to do here. Uh, normally, if you don't do this, what's going to happen is you're required to do the default uh, I guess, tutorial combat section, which takes about a minute and a half to do entirely. And obviously, if we can save a minute and a half, that's pretty good. Uh, it happens right around the blood here. Normally, it would kind of force you to go down the street and, you know, see what it's up. However, you can just run past it now because I have this text up. And what else is there for that? In a moment, I'll be dropping the text. Uh, it can get kind of buggy in some ways, so it's definitely a be careful thing, but you kind of get to see some neat effects with text dropping, I suppose. Uh, so right now on the left, you'll see blank space. It's actually a car. And yes, game save. This game is a classic game save type of game. Another important thing to remember about Silent Hill games, especially like Silent Hill 2, and really any, and really any horror game, uh, as weird as it sounds, uh, a lot of the time save will happen in the basics. I, I guess I'm saying this now because later on we'll probably have a lot more of the uh, the run that we'll be getting to. But early game, it's usually just heading over to the apartment so I can fill this in pretty well. But a lot of your time save will just be, you know, don't take, don't wiggle too much. Make sure you're taking clean lines, clean exits, stuff like that. It adds up a lot more than you think, and a lot of people don't value basic movement. It's pretty nice being able to, uh, you know, just kind of know where you're going. All right, so we're almost up on the apartments. This is the first real hub of the game. We got the key. We're going to be getting right in there. Should be nice and good. And thank you. I don't do runs all the time on the show, but every now and again, I'll do a run, and uh, you can see uh, this side of the GDQ hosting section. Anyway, first things first, we're grabbing this health drink. It is a nice health drink. We're going to need a few of these throughout the run. Uh, second thing, uh, this game actually has tripping. I am bypassing that by mashing games saved indoors. Uh, it's exclusive to hard mode, so it is a neat strategy that you just sort of bypass that. It might not look like anything. I assure you, it is doing quite a lot. I'm going to be grabbing the flashlight right here. That's going to allow us to really start the game. The game has a lot of things that are going to be like, hey, you need a flashlight to see. Go get that. And you should have, can't grab certain items without this. So. And you can kind of see more of what I was talking about, like, you know, how I'm moving, keeping that in mind. Although I just went the wrong way there. But, you know, that's I, I, I wake up around this time, so it's... Technically early for me, in case anyone's wondering. Anyway, we have a few things to do in the apartments before we can really get to phase two of this, which is going to be, we need the gun, and we need to spawn Pyramid Head. So, grabbing the flashlight gun and interacting with Lara here. Uh, Laura, Lara, I, I've been playing Tomb Raider, I'm saying Lara, but... Interacting with Laura uh, allows you to spawn in Pyramid Head right over here. If you did everything right, you'll get a scream like that. Uh, you can actually skip a part of that by mashing save the whole time. Uh, you can see he's right there. He's actually going to spawn in though when I aim because that kind of refreshes the game from the little break I did. And uh, yeah, and good morning everyone. Or good after night. It's nighttime I think. Yeah, nighttime. It's like 10 p.m. East Coast I think. He's on the West Coast. For me it's like 7. You're wondering, it's it's less bad than it sounds. I, mean, I understand, like, it might sound like, wait, this guy woke up at, like, 10 p.m.? No, 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 I woke up at, like, 6. It's it's a little bit better. It's just a wee bit. Anyway, going back to speedrunning really quick. 
Uh, we are now going to decide the game's RNG. Um, as of the past few years, we've been able to find RNG manipulation in Silent Hill. Uh, this allows us to know every single answer in the game, which, that's good. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to go to the clock, we're just going to solve the puzzle as usual, and we're going to pay attention to our start time. In this case, that looks like it's about a 3.48. Uh, knowing that, we are going to be on seed 26, most likely. Uh, there is a whole list of seeds you can get with a program called Lucky Hill. Uh, this kind of takes a bunch of seeds. You can also calculate what you have. We are most likely going to be on seed 26. Uh, what that means is I can now really calculate everything that's going to happen. From this point onward, I can tell you the numbers in the hospital. I can tell you the, uh, the faces. I can tell you where the counterfeit is. And I'll be able to tell you the suitcase answer later in the game. And while we're doing that, what you can see here is we have, uh, it's gonna be 8597, 8331. Uh, the face is going to be turning into its side and then down twice. Um, for the counterfeit, it'll be uh, the fourth one in the cycle, which will be in the back of the room. And then the answer to the final puzzle in the game will be love, if I did that right, which I'm pretty sure we all saw at 348. If it breaks, luckily we'll be old strap, but it probably should work. Alrighty here. Sonal 2 is definitely a fun game to do. And I've spent a lot of hours in this game. It's kind of weird the more I think about it, but I've been running this game since... That's 2018. Which doesn't, didn't sound like a whole lot back when I first started, but... I guess I've been running this game for like six years now, which is kind of wild to think about. Wait, six? Oh my god, it's been six years of me running this game. Huh. Neat. It is a bit of a trip when you think about it. Wait, is that six? 18, 19, 20. Yeah, that's six. Alrighty, anyway, we've done. Wait. Uh, we got the can juice, so now we're going to be able to go right here. My mind drifted to. Uh, what, the the passage of time, I guess? We have the cans, we can then put them in the, uh, the vents. Uh, that's gonna allow us to now get the coins. So the coins are gonna be the next thing coming up in this game. It's kind of the major puzzle that blocks you from exiting the apartments and going to the next section. On the first coin, you can do a little trick here where if you hit save during it or start saving during the text, uh, you can actually move earlier than intended. Uh, that's pretty nice, as that's going to allow us to just get a little bit of extra time there. Uh, we're also going to drop in the pool. Funny enough, on easy, or sorry, beginner and normal, you can do a little trick there that cancels the animation of the fall, but for some reason, it doesn't work on hard. It's one of the weirdest differences of a PC, like, I, I guess the PC port, because uh, this game has uh, quick inventory swapping, meaning if you wanted to uh, swap from, like, pistol to gun, you can do it very quickly. However, one of the weird things is on hard mode, you can't do it during that part. Being stuck in an animation prevents you from doing that. And it's really weird because that only happens on hard, which I, I, I don't even know why it's, it's strange. But I guess these things happen, I suppose. Alrighty, now that we got both of the coins, we can make our way over to the other side of the apartment buildings. Uh, the other side of the apartment is actually pretty easy to do. It's kind of funny because when people play Sonal 2 and then they look at the speedrun, uh, we sort of just breeze through the apartments. Like, this is a section that's much, much longer uh, when you are doing it casually than as a speedrun, which is kind of weird. But... I guess kind of knowing exactly where to go really trivializes some of the game's length. Uh, a lot of horror games are kind of weird because you may be wondering on things like how long to beat or other like uh, general estimations of how long it'll take you to beat a game. A lot of that is under the assumption that, you know, you're actually doing the game's puzzles and interacting with the game, which it makes sense there. But in this case, I already know exactly where to go. I know how to solve the puzzles, which a lot of the length is going to be based on 
you know, the mental power it would take to actually solve the puzzle. Like, for instance, right here, normally there's, like, a riddle about dudes and, like, how they're traveling. Like, oh, one's up, one's down, one's sideways. Uh, this, nah, go fuck. I'm also gonna pause in between to actually remove the, uh, little time that it would, uh, delay to get back in the menu. It'll then be silver two. And snake four. Uh, funny enough... Uh, all the puzzles do change with difficulty, so these are the hard mode answers, which is part of the hard, hard part of the category. Uh, and now that we have the key, we can get another key that then allows us to get to the end of this section. So, something important to note is we're going to be entering the first boss of the game. A lot of people do not know this, but this boss has two conditions. Uh, most people are aware of condition one because that's how most people play the game. However, I'm going to show you something you might not know about, or if you've watched the speedrun, you definitely know about. But what you might not know is that the first boss of the game is actually killable. I guess I'm kind of giving the, the, the new, a uh, new, like maybe you just played Sound Hill thing. But if you check it right here, you can fire at the boss by the times. One. We're gonna walk into him the whole time, he's never gonna move. We're gonna kinda get him stuck right here, getting every bullet into his skull. Two. So, like, run around, avoid getting hit, it's actually pretty difficult. But you can actually damage him. Three. And by doing enough damage, he will also go away. So it's either damage or time. Four. And. One, two, three, four, five. With that, we have a very clean fight. He just goes away. After taking 45 bullets to the skull, he just dips. This is the original PC version of the game. So it's no mods, it's just PC release of the game. So in case you're wondering what the alternative is, maybe you haven't seen it in a while, or maybe you just don't know what it is, uh, alternatively what will happen is you can time out Pyramid Head. Um, by timing him out, you would kind of run around the arena for a degree of time. I think it varies per difficulty on hard mode. I think it's five minutes. I think it's a five minute fight if you don't fight him. Which, uh, running around for five minutes is not very good for speed running, is it? <laughs> uh, anyway, with that, we were allowed to leave the apartments and we're going to be entering the next section, which this is kind of just a get introduced to the cast section. So you have Lara, you're going to have Maria, and then you'll have Eddie. Uh, most of it's gonna be clean movement. So we pretty chill for a bit. But, uh, right now what we're also gonna have is a fun little glitch. Funny, if you normally just skip this so you can run clearly, but it's kind of funny to see how the PC port breaks the game. Uh, with all the game saving, you, you can just kind of get some weird stuff where it's like, Oh no, what's going on? And then it breaks. Uh, you can also move during that, so it doesn't lose any time to show, albeit it's a little bit harder to move during that. <laughs> so, uh, food for thought. And right now, we are now introduced to Maria. Uh, Maria is uh, the game's, I guess, side, like, I, I, there's a name for it, but she's gonna be our friend. I think it's like Deuterologist or something like that. Uh, she's gonna be accompanying us for uh, a good chunk of the game. Uh, she's gonna be the game's escort mission, which this game actually is an escort game to a degree, but it's not because the escort mission is really easy. Uh, Maria is probably one of the most generous characters in any game I've ever played, uh, mainly because she will follow you into any room you go into. If she's close, you do need to take care of her, but otherwise, she will quite literally, it doesn't matter how much I'm out running her, she will stay with me the whole time. As well, right now, I'm actually making my way over to grab the steel pipe, because the steel pipe will allow me uh, to prevent a soft lock later in the game. Later in the game, they kind of expect you to grab the wooden plank, that's the intro weapon, so I can just grab that second weapon and it'll do the same job. Anyway, here's Eddie, uh, he's eating pizza. We don't want that right now. I've been, I'm trying to eat healthier, so you know what? We're gonna ignore Eddie as much as possible. Eddie will get no time for this, no pizza time. Instead, Back to Maria. All right, so Maria mentioned she found Lara. We're gonna be going over to the hospital, which is the next major set piece, and where RNG manipulation is really gonna start kicking in. There's also a lot of neat facts about this game uh, when you end up do playing it. Like the story of this game is absolutely wild. Uh, there is a lot of lore that just shows up and it could be quite fun to think about. 
Uh, people have kind of argued for years, and hell, I think things are still being uncovered at even in the modern age. Uh, in Heaven's Night, we're going to be grabbing the med kit. Uh, this is one of the few you can grab. Uh, there's a few safety med kits you can grab, but normally the ones I grab are the first one in the apartment because it's right there. I grab the one in Heaven's Night, and then later there's one more in the hospital that is worth grabbing. Uh, if things get really bad, there's an additional one in the hospital I like grabbing that's like the health drink. Uh, we don't need that much, but it's nice to have on hard mode. Uh, obviously, the better you get and the lower the difficulty, you actually want to grab less. However, sometimes having that extra bit of health is nice. So you can see I grabbed the health drink right there. Uh, I'll be grabbing the first of my two keys here. They're telling me four keys. However, I already have two of them, as weird as that sounds. So the main goal of the hospital is something called the four lock box. The four lock box has four locks on it. Two of them physical, two of them mental. Uh, we already have the mental blocks. This is the RNG manip I have talked about. So the numbers are going to be once again, if you were remembering, uh, 85, 97, 83, 31. So if you want to help along uh, at home, what you can do is, uh, you can, I guess, type those numbers and think about, uh, what the answer might be later. If you type those numbers, congratulations, you probably did it correctly, provided I didn't mess up. Uh, if you type different numbers, you probably got it wrong, and you'll not be able to solve the puzzle. But don't worry, that's, uh, that's how it goes. So, neat fact right now, taking damage in Sonal 2 does not matter until point. So, right now, I can take any damage I want, provided I don't die. The reason for this is because, also, before I get into that, uh, right here is going to be, uh, it's T, so 1328. But, the damage I take doesn't matter, because in the midpoint of Sonal 2, you take forced damage. You will always be taken down to about one hit off death. Uh, this always happens on the roof. So if you take damage early, that's actually okay, and you're not as punished because you're going to be taking that damage anyway. As long as you don't die, you're probably going to be okay, and it happens right here. So I actually don't want to heal the damage, because if I do, I'll be wasting my medicates. Anyway, like I said, the answers are 8597 and 8331. Uh, I'll actually heal with a quick button, I'll swap over to the shotgun, uh, and... Uh, we can now make our way over to the puzzle, because I have both keys. Uh, for safety purposes, I'm actually going to run in here, and I will grab a health drink. Uh, you don't always need to grab this one. In fact, I almost never do, unless I'm, uh, you know, worried. But, play it safe than sorry. I think I've learned my hotfix lesson over time. Okay. Uh, we have 8331, 85, so this one would be 8331. And this would be 8597. 8597. Oh my god, look, he got those answers without even looking! So it's kind of horrifying to do that, because those are entirely four-digit randomized numbers. I can't brute force that, I can't guess it. I, I, I physically know the answer because of RNG manipulation. By the way, I got hit twice there, it's pretty rough. So with that, we now have a piece of hair on the hook, which allows us to get the uh, key to the elevator, and we can now get ready to fight the boss coming up. That's actually really clean. And we get one more little trick here, which you can actually save upon pushing the elevator button, and then load. And what that does is it removes the time in the elevator, which is actually kind of funny, because elevators are now just free time saving the game. You don't lose any time riding an elevator anymore. Uh, I'll grab extra ammo from this room, because we're going to need for hard mode. And it is time for the first real boss. Tell me the second boss. Pyramid has a boss. So this is Flesh Lips, and this is probably one of the toughest fights in the game. I'm going to explain pretty well. First things first, I pop a shot. Uh, I'm going to walk a little bit backward, and then I'm going to wait and pop another shot. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm trying to gauge the fight. I take one more step back. I'm going to pop another one. So you don't need to do this every time. This is a feelings fight. So I want to pop five to six shots on this guy. You're looking for those toes to curl. After that, pop one into this one. I'm going to get grabbed with the feet. However, I am not a jury main, so what I'm going to do is... Actually, I am a jury main. But you know what? I want to pop another shot right there. I'm trying to get an angle. I'm trying to get close. And I want to make sure that this boss is eating close hits. Final 2 has a lot of effects of damage. I'm going to manually reload right now. So the reason why... So number 3, we're going to do the same thing, nice and clean. The reason why number 1 was so particular in my movement is because how close they are to you is how aggressive the second one will be. If the second one's attacking you, you will do less damage because it's more awkward. Uh, they might hit each other, which can happen. It does not help you, as funny as that sounds. So, I'm trying to make sure that when I'm backing up, I'm preventing Flesh Lips number 2 from coming closer to Flesh Lips number 1. 
And I also want to make sure I'm staying as close as possible and getting both, uh, you know, close hits and revenge hits. Pisano 2, while we're doing the uh, the next hospital section, we have to grab a couple of keys. It'll be pretty easy. A couple rings. This is going to be pretty simple, so I can explain what I'm trying to do here. By the way, that was a near-perfect fight. That was actually a really good fight for what I did. Okay. So, damage in Sonal 2 is really interesting. The way it works is... It's based on two things. Proximity and aggression, I would say. Also, do not load this elevator. This is the only elevator in the game you can't load. Well, that and, like, elevators that don't have buttons, but... You can't load that one. If you do, it'll soft lock the whole game. So... But the damage, if you're close, closer you are to an enemy with any weapon, you will do more damage. Just physically, if you are close, you get rewarded. You will do a lot of damage. So the shotgun, I want to make sure I'm right up there to get some good damage, right? Now, the, the, uh, the other point is whenever an enemy attacks, if you follow up with an attack, you will actually get an increase in damage as well. And this applies to every difficulty. Uh, you can get some wild hits as a result of this, especially later in the game. Um, the game does keep account for this, and it is a real fluctuating numbers. So every bit of damage isn't consistent, it has a variety of factors that go into that. Anyway, Maria's back, uh, she's chilling with us, and you know, she's, she's doing just fine. She's gonna help us get some rings. We're gonna head back down, same trip with the elevators, and it's gonna work quite well. Also, I want to mention that with Sonal 2, I have uh, labbed a lot of these fights over time. I have put a lot of work into the routing hard mode. Uh, this has kind of become my pet category in a way, and I am a always really, I'm always a big fan of showing it off. Uh, there's a lot of runners that tend to jump around. Most runners will hop to the regular uh, easy mode or start beginner mode, uh, any percent. Uh, it's the most popular category. Uh, and some runners actually tackle um, normal normal. In fact, I think normal normal might be showing up at frame fatales if I remember right. I could be wrong, but I think it might be. And that uh, is done by Sun Insomnium. Well, I see it's in chat right there. Anyway, we have the rings, and we have that. I actually do really like Normal Normal. It's a category that does not get explored nearly as much. But I'm definitely a sucker for Hard Hard. Alrighty, so it is now time for the next boss. On Easy and Normal, you actually have nothing to worry about. You can just run through. On Hard Mode, you have to do a trick. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be getting the uh, game saved during a part of the game I'm not meant to have game saved. And this is going to prevent Pyramid Head from spawning in. So, normally Pyramid Head's really fast and will murder Maria while you're running here. However, by bringing up the text right here, Pyramid Head will never spawn in. And the thing is, you end up getting a weird quirk here, where this happens. You see Amerson normal on the towel schedule? I think that sounds like that might be the normal, normal thing. Sound was weird, where an 8% gets used for marathons, but normally for, um... Also, oh, wait, hold on, what, what's with these names? What, what's going on? Oh, wait, wait. You get the parking lot name, where uh, Maria is now parking lot. She has been, her name has been changed. You have a Gant saved, it changes it, and then Maria is no longer Maria, but her name is now parking lot, they forgot. In case you're wondering why that happens, me having Gantt saved kind of messes with the game's text and it doesn't know what to do for the subtitles, so it ends up going through save locations like Parking Lot and Forest. So it's like, oh, what, Marie, Parking Lot, Parking Lot. The Parking Lot is now dead. But yeah, I really like Normal Normal as a category. It is a neat one, but I'm definitely a, a big hard mode fan. And Silent Hill games, often it's weird because, uh, like, even for tonight's show, we'll use uh, any percent, uh, mainly because any percent is a very easy way of describing what the category does. However, at the same time, the difficulty is where all the action is. So most people tend to run on easy or beginner. Uh, in fact, Silent Hill 2 is the only one for beginner, so most people run on easy. Um, normal is a neat category that is not as paid attention to, but... Oh! It still has its waves. In fact, I started off on normal, normal. I have a big respect out for the normal categories. And then hard modes are, tend to be a lot less explored for how difficult they are. Also, hello. How is it going? All right, so we have uh, about five minutes of running in the dark. This section is cool. However, there's a lot of running through an empty town. 
So I guess if anyone has any questions about this run or any Silent Hill runs in general, you are more than welcome to ask. I am a person who has ran every single Silent Hill game. I am a big fan of the franchise, and I arguably, uh, honestly, I feel like uh, in terms of speedrunning it, I probably have the most overall, uh, you know, action in there. There's a lot of great runners throughout the various games. So, we shall see. I tend, to, I tend to know a lot of the different people in the different pockets of these fine games. But it's also pretty nice, because I think every single game has its, like, sub-communities. Like, the Silent Hill 1 community is really tight. Uh, they've been going for years, and, like, the Silent Hill 1 runners, they, they love Silent Hill 1. Um, like, Silent Hill 2 runners uh, tend to ebb and flow. Like, the game gets really active, it kind of drops off for a bit. Silent Hill 3 is a weird one, where I feel like that game is, like... Kind of in a similar boat where it always has some people but at the same time like it has a wave where everyone comes in at once and then it just doesn't and these games got difficulty adjustment uh i don't believe they do sound hole games are rather fair in that there's not too much da um one moment here we're actually grabbing a key uh you may have noticed i have the light off uh it's actually a part two of a skip that from earlier if you remember the plank of wood i actually have to do it again so if you're wondering what I'm doing, I have to grab a wrench, but I also have to make sure I don't activate the combat tutorial. I do play Dead Rising. I do all the Dead Rising games. Silent Hill Remake will be quite exciting. So, funny enough, going to the idea of DA, uh, uh, Leon, you asked about difficulty adjustment. A lot of Resident Evil games, uh, starting with RE4 make, actually feature difficulty adjustment, or DA. So, Silent Hill games don't quite have DA. However, how you play the game and like the damage you're taking actually might apply to the ending you get. Funny enough, uh, Silent Hill 2's endings are very complex. There's a lot that goes along with it. So if you end up having uh, damage, uh, you end up getting closer to one of the game's endings as a result. Any major training is the speedrunning HD version. Yes, I think the HD version has a unique glitch where I think you can go out of bounds during the, like when you meet Maria. Um, you would probably, it'd, it'd be effectively doing the game glitchless as well, because you don't get any PC tech. And every game kind of has its little quirks. Um, you could do RNG manipulation, I believe, on console, but I don't know if you do it on HD. And for a while, people were theorizing that the HD collection, in theory, could be the fastest version of the game to run. But luckily, that didn't pan out. Now, to remake should be quite exciting. You know, yeah, that's right. Find out I'm born from much about parking lot. And then it's also pretty neat because while a lot of these games are similar and a lot of them share tech, uh, every Silent Hill game has its own subtle quirks with how it moves. So if you're really good at Silent Hill 2, while well, you can carry over to the other games, it's not a guarantee. Like, Silent Hill 1 is probably, I would argue, the most unique of the games in how it moves. Uh, it's very clunky in a way, in a good way. It's a very, it's a very rigid game. It's a very, Harry moves like a tank. Silent Hill 2, uh, you get a lot more of that modern control movement. Uh, it is probably one of the smoothest games to control and it controls the most like games you'd probably expect from horror games. Uh, Silent Hill 3 is a little bit awkward, but it's actually very clean and you get the hang of it because that game you end up playing tank, but it's smoother in tank than modern. And that's weird to say because of the way Heather, um, the scraping. And then Silent Hill 4 is probably uh, a, one of the most interesting ones as well, because it isn't as rigid as 1, but it's also not as fluid as 2 or 3. It has its own quirks on movement, which we'll be seeing later today, in fact. And then uh, Origins tends to be pretty simple. It kind of plays like this. Uh, Shattered Memories is straight up a Wii game. Uh, it doesn't control like any of the other games. Um, and then Homecoming and Downpour control more like modern games. Like, it's funny that those are now penalty older, but still. And yeah, Harry Mason in Silent Hill 1 has a lot of gravity behind him. Uh, a lot of people don't know this, but in comparison to any tank control game, he just controls vastly different. And it's kind of funny, because as you play a lot of different games, you might think, hey, I should be able to retain some information, right? Um, sometimes the muscle memory you might learn isn't good for certain games. And Silent Hill 1 is really one of the only old school horror games that doesn't move like the other ones.
So we have the really long staircase here, and I actually want to mention really quick that um, with Sonic 2 and a lot of games, uh, the reason why I'm able to talk about the whole idea of uh, a lot of game, you know, when you play different games, sometimes muscle memory carry over. Uh, I do run quite a lot of games. Uh, you may uh, normally see me uh, hosting speedruns from the crypt on the host side. I actually do a bunch of speedruns myself. Uh, currently, I am at 184 different games that I run, and I have a confirmed recent time in the last year. In, in the last year, I ran 184 unique games. And that's not like, I oh, I've learned that much over time. No, in the last year, I ran that many games. As in, like, all my times were gotten, uh, although they weren't PBs, uh, I've gotten a time in every one of those games in the last year. I like horror games. I like games in general. What can I say? I'm a fan of speedrunning. Anyway, we're now back to the actual game here. Uh, we're stuck in a well. Uh, this would be the soft lock. Uh, if you look for the red tape on the, uh, the red little paper on the left, you can go right there. And you can just break it with this pipe. 184, yep. I know that because I had to count all of them. I had a series on my YouTube where what I did was I ran every game I ever learned. Um, at the end of it, it, it was actually about one, I think it was like 167. And recently since then, I have added about 17 games. Also, right there, I have just done a glitch uh, by saving while picking up the item, or saving after picking up the item. I have duplicated the spiral key, meaning I am now able to not uh, avoid the uh, bug room. Normally, that's an RNG puzzle room. You wouldn't want to deal with that. Uh, so this way, it's much, much faster. Yeah, I, I like the horror genre. I've been a fan of horror speedrunning for quite a while. Uh, was that the wheel? Oh no, I just did a, uh, it was a series of streams I did last summer, um, where I ran every single game I have ever done. Uh, I broke it into a lot of days. It took me from, I think, July? Going all the way till about September. Like, late July into September. And it took me about 200 plus hours. I don't remember exactly how long, but it took a long time. Which is kind of funny, because I remember when I was early on in my speedrunning tenure, like, a lot of people assume that I do a lot of short games. Some of the games are short, but a lot of the games are really long. I think it ended up averaging, like, a little bit, like, over, like, an hour and some change per game. I do Amnesia games. I've only really ran Amnesia the Bunker. I ran the Dark... I don't count the Dark Descent, but I have done a run of it. I don't count it in my list because I have not ran it in years. In fact, here's the sound of me trying to run Amnesia the Dark Descent. If you're wondering why, Amnesia the Dark Descent is an awesome speedrun. It's really good. However, it's really hard and requires you to have a lot of hours in that game. And I can never really get it down. Probably because I just, uh, Amnesia's game, I never was able to fully explore my own time. So it's kind of a trip. Uh, if you do want to see a good Amnesia run, though, honestly, I recommend Blood Thunder. He's been on the Hoppets before. We've had him, I think, four Amnesia games. And it's an awesome run. It plays a lot more like, uh, Mirror's Edge than it plays like Amnesia, as weird as that sounds. Uh, anyway, we now have all the answers to the puzzle. We can use it right here, and we can actually do the same glitch you've been doing with the save. Is that the French flag? It is. The French are my friends. Uh, however, I am not French in the slides. Alrighty. So, we're going to be dropping down a lot of holes. And we're now in the elevator. The elevator is a fun time to chill. While we're in here, we're going to be getting ready for these, uh, the, the labyrinth coming up. This is the next section. Uh, only thing doing here is make sure you're loaded on your guns, shotgun, and pistol. You want to have pistol out. Yeah, we should be good to go. Yeah, I should get a moment to stretch, get a moment to chill. Nice. Yeah, it's kind of weird, though, because a lot of the games I end up learning and tending to be, like, you know, over an hour. Or at least take over an hour. And I really like the sweet spot of about one hour. Some games are really long, some games are really short. Like, there are a few games that are, like, you know, 10 to 20 minutes, but then one game that was, like, 12 hours, so, I mean, you get what you get. 
And not all the games were horror games. Some of them were like games I just know about, weird games, awful games. You know how it is. Um, that being said, uh, just as a way of kind of knowing, and uh, I like to mention this for a lot of people who are, you know, potentially interested in speedrunning anything, just do it. Don't, you don't have to care about being world record, you don't have to care about being perfect, just do it. Perfection is something you form, it's not something you just, uh, you know, have naturally. It's practice, practice, practice. The only way you're going to get better times in these games is by grinding them out. Sometimes you'll learn a game, you'll realize, hey, I don't quite click with that. This game's not quite working for me. And then, you know what? Maybe it does or it doesn't. But you'll be able to know at that point. And you can still run it every now and again. It doesn't have to be something you run daily. It can be something you just you pull out when you feel like it's right. You do it because you want to do it. Doing something because you want to do it is a lot more fun than feeling like you have to do it. You don't have to run the games that show up on GDQ, for instance. You don't have to run the game because it's popular. If you want to run some random game out there, you can run some random game. I, at one point, I once found a game so awful that I decided to route it fully. Why? The game was hilarious, and I wanted there to be a speedrun in the record for that. What game was that? It was this game called The Crow City of Angels. I actually did it on a, um, on one of the Hoppix shows, Awfully Silly, uh, I think a while back, where it is a PS1 game that is a fighting tank control beat em up about the crow, and it's just about as awful as you imagine. So. What's the scary Silent Hill? Uh, horror is in the eyes of the beholder, probably too. However, really any of them have their moments, and really depends on what gets you. In terms of modern, like, people will probably be more terrified of the more recent ones because of the way it is, but, you know, still. All right, so right now, you can move through the labyrinth, they have an enemy shooter mission right here. In case you're wondering, by the way, oh, why are you talking about all the speedrunning, uh, all this uh, side speedrunning stuff? Well, the run's kind of just going through a couple rooms and getting supplies. We got the Great Knife, which we used for boss fights. We solved that head puzzle, which I told you the answer earlier. And, uh, well, now we're making our way to the labyrinth, going over to the next boss. Run the R series? Yep, I run all of them. Except I run, actually, most of them. I run, I run most of them. I'm trying to learn all of them. So, we've been chopping it down bit by bit. For Resident Evil, I run RE1 make, RE2 make, RE3 classic, RE3 make, RE4, uh, RE6, uh, RE7, RE Village, uh, Outbreak, Outbreak File 1, uh, Survivor, Umbrella Corp, Survivor 2, Survivor 4, um, what else do I run? I had to look at the list of Resident Evil games. Also, like I said earlier, the counterfeit answer is four. It's right here. That is the counterfeit. In case you're wondering, by the way, if you're a Silent Hill 2 fan, maybe you like the speedrun. Why am I calling it the counterfeit? On hard mode, that's actually the counterfeit. Uh, the puzzle here isn't based on the arsonist. It's based on the, uh, the counterfeit. And um, most of the other runs, whether it be, um, you know, um, beginner or normal, uh, they would use the normal difficulty, which makes it the counterfeit. However, I've been having arguments lately that I think normal uh, normal difficulty for action would actually benefit more from doing um, hard mode. Because hard mode gives you an RNG chance to have a faster puzzle on uh, the box heads. At worst case scenario, you're on the normal difficulty, which is funny. And yeah, I've done a lot of silly runs and other runs. Uh, we did a Great Knife only a while back, which, you know, maybe it might have to return again. Uh, it, may, it, may have, it may have been a bit, uh, if I think about it. I know uh, Richard enjoyed Great Knife only. Uh, it would be kind of funny to bring that back for uh, an April Fool's gimmick. Everyone already guide in? I would like to. RE6 is a neat game. Personally, the worst Resident Evil game is Umbrella Corp. It's rough. And I did a run of that. It's a rough run. Anyway, it is now time for the boss fight. Eddie is a very particular fight. He has a lot to say and a lot to think about. 
Uh, as well, we'll be using that new weapon we got, the Great Knife, to deal with Eddie. Now, I haven't talked about the Great Knife. Let me talk about the Great Knife. The Great Knife is a weapon we got in the underground. It is Pyramid Head's Great Knife. It is immensely strong. It allows us to do a metric ton of damage. Eddie, However, the catch is, is it's very doing? slow. So I'm going to move my hands over my keyboard. It's a little bit more consistent here. And what's going to happen here is I'm going to get the Great Knife ready. He usually punches me. He might run away. I'll wait for Eddie to run. Let's speed stop. I will then kind of get ready, hit him once. And lately, I've actually been swapping over to the shotgun, and then I'm gonna pop him and get closer. Oh, he's not dead, what? There. That's so weird, okay. Eddie, normally you take more damage. Proximity, huh? Okay, so, hold on a moment here. We're gonna get right about here. I wanna get Eddie stuck in the meat. Uh, he is going to, uh, you know, hit the meat consistently while I am hitting him with a great knife. Uh, I want to get a lot of these big swings, this is one of the toughest fights in the game, and perfect. I've not played Dementium, um, and what else is there? Start speedrunning this, what do you recommend? Start each pass, don't know the glitches. Well, you can learn the glitches, for one. Uh, you don't have to do it immediately, you don't have to master every glitch. However, what you'd want to do is finish a run. That's the first thing you should do. For any, this is advice for any game out there. For any game that exists, if you want to learn a game, the best thing you do, well, finish a run. Look up the route, find the route, find some route, maybe a guide. Some people have guides. So let's say, are you doing Silent Hill 2? Look up a GDQ run. Look up uh, any marathon run you've ever seen. It could be a small marathon, big marathon. Um, if you, you know, depending on what you, what you want, um, find, see if you can find a run for that. Not all runs will exist. Very often you can go to the leaderboard. A lot of speedrunners will also make guide videos. They have guides, you can check those out. But first things first, find some way for you to know the route. You need to have the whole shell of the game. This is how you beat the game, A to B. So in this case, how do you get from the car in the beginning of the tunnel to, to your wife at the end of the game? You just have to beat the game. You have to find every location to go to, and you can break the game into different parts. For Silent Hill 2, the parts to break this game into. Also, the boat's easy. You just hold upright, look at the light, and then go forward. Uh, we're also going to be grabbing an item out here. This is the mermaid uh, box. Uh, this is one of the three boxes we need. This one's sneaky because it's outside. So, for Silent Hill 2, the things in the game are going to be, you know, apartments, uh, streets, uh, hospital, or sorry, uh, yeah, apartment, streets, hospital, hospital, other world, streets again, uh, tour society, prison, uh, labyrinth, uh, boat, hotel. So now that we're in the hotel, here's the out of bounds. What we're going to be doing is I'll be hitting game save, it'll bring, bring up the text, and I'll be running up here. There are two ways of doing this. I'll be doing it a very quirky way. Uh, I am the only one who really does it this way for some reason. But I get James' little feet sticking out there. I get to a certain angle. I hold up, and then I'm able to fall through the floor. Uh, a lot of people, what they'll do is they'll just walk into the ground. That's actually a good way of doing it. However, I find it just be a little bit um, weird in my way. I don't really vibe with it, so I do it that way. Funny enough, this is actually a good example of what I can say. If you can find a way to do a certain trick, a lot of tricks can be feeling-based. It doesn't always have to be a certain way. You can find other answers. Ah, so yeah, you need to do it, and then also see what you're doing wrong, see what you're doing stuck on. You can put, you can run a game, you can have a run on your side that allows you to then see what's happening. By the way, Out of Bounds, what did that do? Why did I do it? The Out of Bounds prevents me from having to dump all of my resources into a locker so I can get down here. Normally, this is a scary part of the game, and you have to lose everything you have so you can go to this section where you have no weapons and you have to deal with a lot of enemies. There you go. James. All right, cool. It's not that long, and even if you speedrun, it's not that long, but being able to get here early without the loss of my resources is quite ideal. Also, yes, my wife. That is uh, that is the point of Sonal 2. Just saying my wife repeatedly. We also get the light bulbs, which is how we get out of the section. And we're actually making pretty good time. We are almost getting out of here. We're actually near the end of the game. Probably have maybe about, I don't know, a few more minutes left. 
Like we have uh, end of the hotel. Normally I'm getting about 53s for RTA. It's like 53, 50, actually no, like normally like a 50, I don't know, about 55, something like that. Something like that. Anyway, time for the next puzzle. What we're gonna be doing is that RNG puzzle I talked about earlier. This is the briefcase code. Briefcase is RNG. Wait, the game? Okay, well, there we go, that was, that was weird. If a shot, you should. And then keep in mind, the game you want to do is entirely up to you. You don't have to do a certain game because someone tells you to. Do whatever you want. In fact, I'll, I can give you a pro tip. But first, briefcase. The answer is love. We found that out earlier. If you remember, I called out every answer. I did the, what, the Babe Ruth. And hey, look, love. So... If you want to learn a speed run, let me give you something. Pick five games. Five games you like. Vary the genre if you can. Pick five games you always liked maybe as a kid. Look into them. Try them out. Watch them. See if it's something you like. Uh, give it a give it a go. If you don't like it, don't do it. If you like it, do it. Pick five. They'll be well varied. You can find something that fits you. Pick games that you actually like. Don't pick a game that, that you know is popular that you hate. Like. It could be any game. There's no wrong answer. And there's some wrong answers, but even then, if you enjoy it, you enjoy it. Alrighty, so now we have everything we need. We are entering the final section of the game. Uh, this is going to feature the final boss and some other things. Yep. There we go. It's always an awkward door. I'm probably going to be getting a 45 in this game. Uh, we turn in the videotape, the plot twist is that VHS is once there, and alright, we're now getting ready for the final boss of this game. So at this point, it's a lot of, like, labyrinths, but luckily you can avoid a lot of the labyrinth by merely doing this. Uh, this movement always seems to work, it is quite nice. And we're now entering back down to the bar. So at this point, for hard mode, I take all the help here. This, I, you don't always need it, but it's nice to have. Uh, they give you a lot of resources, you will need them. Some wrong answers. It normally tends to be things that you can't really run that well, like games that are on a rail. Like you, can, you can do it if you want to, but some games are a bit tougher to run, because, like... And you know what? Here's a good example. If you want to get a free roll record, run Home Alone. I think it's, like, 30 minutes. You just have to last 30 minutes, and then you win. So if you beat the game, you, you win. That's it. And then you have a world record, because everyone has a world record in that game. Okay, what am I doing? Alright, boss time! This is the Dual Pyramid Head. Dual Pyramid Head's one of the hardest fights in the game. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to get a great knife out and I'll be swapping over to tank controls. Okay, so... Tank controls. Here's what's going to happen. I'm going to be holding down the button and doing a big swing. This is going to swing into the wall only on tank controls. This is going to allow me to actually hit them repeatedly. I'm hitting them on the way there and hitting them on the way back. So that's good. You can see what's happening here. Uh, this makes the fight very easy, although you do need to get the setup properly, and it makes one of the toughest fights just very trivial. Uh, normally, this is a fight that will take all of your resources, all of your ammo. Uh, however, this way, we're able to do quite a lot in saving said ammo. And then you get two eggs. You know, I like eggs. Eggs are delicious. Maybe I'll have an egg after this run. Well, no, after the show, I guess. And Yeah, I don't really... Uh, hold on, I don't really get food till after the show. Maybe I'll have an egg after the show. And now we have the final boss coming up. At this point, it's funny enough, I'm actually playing on keyboard. I'm no longer playing on my controller. My controller is right here. Barry? I'm not playing it anymore. I'm playing on James? keyboard. 
Oh, that's not scary as a child? I it's scary now. Flowers. You're used to horror. Flowers. I guarantee you put someone who doesn't like horror games in front of that, they'd still be scared. Just go home, uh, the thing is, it's not very Mary, scary when you have you some, uh, some guy... Uh, oh, that's it. You have some guy running into a corner and just cheesing the fight. And you know what you're doing, it's a lot easier. Knowledge over time changes a lot of horror games. It's also weird, because a lot of people assume that because a game's not scary means it's not horror. It doesn't mean it's not scary, it means you probably are more resistant to horror, or probably more immune to horror. The only thing that makes it a horror game is that the creator wanted it to, you know, intended for it to scare you. Now, the thing is, if it fails that, is it good? Probably not. But at the same time, that is the, uh, that's how horror is defined. Anyway, boss fight. The way it's going to work is I'm going to be taking a look out for uh, the boss. Um, he's going to have a few attacks. I'm going to be hitting her with a great knife, kind of like a pinata. I want to get a lot of close hits. Proximity, once again, is key. And the mod's going to be an annoying attack. I'm looking for the end of kind of like an arch in order to give an attack. If I go too early, I miss a hit. If I go too late, I also miss a hit. I'm looking for like right about there. How are the moths? So. It's a tough fight. Grand Knight front on GDQ win? It already happened. It was April Fool's a few years ago. That should be it. Good hit. Might be too much damage though. Jump scares are fine, by the way. Alright, that's a hit. That's good. Alright, come on. Almost done. Going through the rest of the hits here. That's good. I'm gonna agree? I would not agree. Bloodstained is horror. Oh wait, wrong attack. Bloodstained is horror because it has things like Dracula in it, right? You have vampires. Like, vampires are kind of quintessential horror. At least horror adjacent. Like, it still fits the umbrella of horror. In fact, by the way, done. Horror is a genre that is very varied. It isn't something that's just going to be a one size fits all. It doesn't, if you, you know, you don't have to have a heart attack to have, have be horror. You don't have to be terrified. Horror is more of a mood or a vibe. It's anything that can unnerve, disgust, anything that kind of terrifies you. It doesn't have to be, whew, it, it can be anything. It can be knowing that out there, there's some terrifying stuff. Anyway, that was Sonal 2. I got a 45-35, that run was decent. Uh, it really depends. Um, I, I preferably I like to get a lot lower. I've been working to try to get a 43. I've actually got some really close ones. I would like to uh, grind this out, and I probably will grind this more out. I do hope you enjoy this run of Sonal 2. We have a lot of fun runs coming for you. And yeah, anyway, uh, you'll probably see me again in a moment. Not on this screen, but probably the host screen. So uh, once again, I've been Ecdysis. If you want to check me out, twitch.tv slash Ecdysis, YouTube, Twitter, all that jazz. You can find me on all that. I talk a lot about what horror is. I talk about what horror can be. Uh, and I play a lot of horror games. So all righty. So I'll, uh, let's get to the next game, shall we? Take it away. Well, hello, friends, and happy time zone to you all. My name's DJ Rebirth, and I'm a real-life DJ who also speedruns horror games. Uh, I've been speedrunning Silent Hill 4 The Room for over six years. It's my favorite uh, game in the Silent Hill franchise, and it's also my favorite game to speedrun. I speedrun it at least once a week. Um, I've watched the games speedrun uh, evolve on different platforms from the OG PS2, Xbox, and PC versions to the current and most optimal version of the game, which we're also going to be uh, running tonight. Uh, the GOG version that released at the end of um, October uh, 2020. 
So that was really cool just to be able to jump into. You could use like modern controllers with it. And it was just compatible with most like Windows operating systems, which is something, you know, we all, we've all we all sought after. But um, yeah, right now it's honestly the uh, only true Silent Hill franchise game that's easily accessible to play. And it runs like a dream. I like it a lot. Um, I'm excited to share this run with you. Uh, it's absolutely crazy design. Uh, the speedrun is extremely hectic. Uh, it's R got crazy RNG. And there's a lot of uh, interesting uh, game lore as well. Um, so normally before uh, I start the game, I always choose the uh, the blood color. There's three blood colors, red, green, and purple. And I think since we're on the cusp, we're, we're at the end of February, going to March, I think we should go green. So anytime you see uh, Henry, our main character, bleed, or any of the enemies bleed, they'll just, you know, spray out a nice, a nice generous, uh, you know, little, little, little spritz, of, spritz of green to, you know, bring on our upcoming spring cheer. <laughs> So we're going to be playing the game in basically the equivalent of like just post game new, new game plus mode, which essentially just allows us to skip cutscenes. It makes the run a little bit quicker. Uh, the run is judged based on in game time, so any like lag or anything that you see like RTA real time time uh, that doesn't ne- there. There's when you um, when you're like in menus, when you're reading documents, when you're solving puzzles with like yes no prompts and stuff like that. That that um, freezes the in-game timer. But otherwise, the timer is running. It's absolutely erratic and maniacal, and I love it. So I'm ready to go. So let's go ahead and count it down. 99, 98, I'm just kidding. All right, here we go. Three, two, one, let's go. That's the wrong button. That's the right button. (laughs) I was just making sure you all were awake. All right, here we go, let's party. All right, so this is Silent Hill 4, the fourth Silent Hill game ever released. Um, it's the first game uh, to feature any sort of 3D uh, interaction. We're in and out of this apartment um, many times. It also came out uh, exactly one year after uh, Silent Hill 3, and it's also the very first Silent Hill game to actually not take place in Silent Hill at all. Um, all right, we're just going to go and read her. I'm sorry, look at this telephone. We're going to skip this cut scene here. We, we awoke in a nightmare where we were actually... Uh, our main character, Henry Townsend, but we were actually in the brain of the former resident of this apartment, uh, Joseph Schreiber, who is a um, he was a journalist who uh, we'll be interacting with a lot in this game, even though he is uh, no longer alive. He's going to be feeding us like red notes and things like that that we'll be reading to kind of further our progress. We're just grabbing a chocolate milk drink, very important drink from the refrigerator. Uh, we peeked out the front door very quickly, or rather just looked at the front door because uh, we can't escape. There's locks all over the front door. <laughs> Two second difference. All right, perfect, perfect. So yeah, we just examined the the storage, uh, the storage bin, and now we're just gonna fly into the bathroom where we heard a uh, heard a loud clatter to see what's the matter. And now this ginormous hole has formed in our bathroom. We're gonna grab this steel pipe, examine the hole twice, and now we're going to enter the hole. So I play this game on controller. Uh, this game can be played on keyboard and mouse. Right now I'm switching to keyboard to just um, essentially go through this hole and hold down the, the WASDA up key because if you hold it down too long, Henry will actually stop crawling. So what I actually do is I hold it down for just a brief moment and then and then I release it so we keep crawling. But yeah, we got that hype in, hype in Chalky Milk. Great to have you all here. I hope you all enjoy this run very much. This game has a ton of lore. Uh, I'm going to try and get through as much as I uh, possibly can. Um, so, all right. So what we did was when we awoke in the bedroom, we briefly glanced out the uh, the window and we actually saw this lady that we're about to meet very briefly. And then she's just going to disappear off screen. Her name is Cynthia Velasquez. But actually, we looked out Henry's window. And we saw Cynthia uh, wait for a second outside the subway and then descend into it. Um, so now she's in the subway. We're in the subway. But this is a very... Uh, otherworldly, strange, nightmarish version of the uh, Ashfield subway. So we got a quick little cut scene where Cynthia basically grabs her tummy and runs into the bathroom and then these uh, hyena dogs appear. Uh, So now we're going to enter this and find a strange hole in the wall. That will actually, anytime we interact with a hole like this, it'll take us back to our apartment uh, and we will wake up in bed. So now we're not sure if this is a dream or not. I like to liken this game a lot to kind of like Nightmare on Elm Street because every time we're in an other world, it's kind of like, a, you know, one of Freddy Krueger's uh, little, little, little nightmare spots. So we just moved this piece of furniture. There's actually a hole in our wall, uh, the little tiny peephole. Every time we peep into it, we can actually see uh, the inside of the bedroom of room 303, where our neighbor Eileen Galvin lives. Um, so real quick, now we're going to get a phone call from Cynthia. I don't know how she got her number, probably the phone book. She's just going to uh, tell us a couple things. We can't skip this cutscene, so I normally hydrate here. I've got a can of liquid death here, so just going to take a quick little, 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 little water break. 
unskippable cutscene, unskippable water break, I always like to say. All right, so Cynthia said her piece, just basically beckoning us to come back to the subway. So now we're going to enter the subway. Yeah, this is all perfectly normal, you know, regular everyday stuff. So now, uh, Cynthia telling us that she's found a subway token. Well, we found a mannequin, a strange, uh, just dummy of Cynthia with bloody hands. Very strange. And we just examined it and we just picked up a subway token. But yeah, stay hydrated, chat. Hy hydrated, that's a word. All right. <laughs> so now we're going to take the subway token. We're going to round this corner and use it on this turnstile. And we're going to descend further into the... Uh, Ashfield, South Ashfield subway. And actually, we're going to skip the very first cutscene that's going to introduce the uh, ghosts. So these are ghosts. They're not zombies. They're not ghosts. So they're, you know, they're, they're, they have physical form so we can run into them and they can mess with us a whole bunch. By the way, there's Cynthia. Now she has spawned inside a uh, this, this subway train. So we're just going to uh, run up here and we're going to uh, use this lever that's inside the uh, front train car. The captain, the captain's nest and we're just gonna push this. This will open the uh, subway. So now, or I'm sorry, the subway train. And now uh, Cynthia has been released and now she's following us. The game kind of tricks you and makes you think that, okay, well now Cynthia is following you. We should, uh, you know, we, sh we should keep her close by so she can, you know, go where we uh, go where we need to go. But actually anytime we go through any door or any sort of like thing that just transitions to a new screen, she'll just, she'll be right there. Her, her following, uh, her, her escort AI is absolutely immaculate. There will actually be an escort quest taking place in the second half of this game that's uh, very unlike uh, Cynthia's uh, movement. The person that we'll be escorting later, spoiler, Eileen Galvin, our next door neighbor, uh, she needs to be very, very close to us in very close proximity in order for us to actually uh, go through any door that we intend to uh, bring her through. So what's kind of interesting about this is that as you, um, as you, you can kind of like run in a straight line with Henry, or at least you can try. You can also adjust the camera a little bit and adjusting the trajectory of the camera will uh, change Henry's movement. So you can kind of utilize that to increase his movement, add like a little bit of speed to it. Also, uh, there's a cutscene we skipped. This is the first time we actually saw a big, big old version of that hole, uh, which has the uh, iconic um, halo of the sun around it. So we're just going to pick up these uh, pistol bullets. These are going to come in handy later. We're going to unlock this door, which is an extremely, extremely important door um, that we're going to be using later. So we're just going to run here, dodge a couple of these ghosts. Um, and so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight this gun and I'm going to equip this gun as soon as we go through the door or right before we go through the door. So that'll skip the animation of us actually um, equipping the gun, but we'll equip it anyway and we'll go through the door. So now we're just going to go up this uh, extremely loud... Um, Actually, this is, I like to say, this is like the loudest room in the game. Anytime I stream this, uh, my chat's always like, the game's too loud, the game's too, I always have the game up like way too loud, so I end up turning it down. Um, but yes, this is the loudest room in the game. It's the, it's the escalator that never ends. So actually what we're going to do is anytime we see, we run up to an enemy, we're going to use the subway token. I learned this from a, a Sound Hill 4 speeder, a speedrunner death tropes, where basically um, when you run up and use the uh, subway token, any, any item essentially that's just an unusable key item, it'll just stop Henry's movement and kind of reset his hitbox a little bit. Ooh, that's a freebie. If one of these, no, nope, that, it's a, it, that was a, that was a, that was a, that was a, that was a false freebie. Anytime these little boyos stick their head out the wall and don't attack, you can essentially just run past them. That's what we tried to do with that last one. Otherwise, they'll just pop out and swing at you. So you just got to kind of stop. And uh, but yeah, thank you. Thank you, everybody, for the good luck. It's always great to have everybody here. All right, so now we're going to go up these stairs and go through this door. We're going to pull this temptation placard on the wall. We're going to skip a cutscene where actually Cynthia Velasquez, the nice lady we met, uh, is uh, in the process of dying. This is a horror game, so people uh, people like to die as as they do in horror games. So we wa we unfortunately watched her pass away, um, and we noticed that there was a let's see, I always get this wrong. It's either sixteen or seventeen. One si one six one uh, two one carved into her chest. I think it's sixteen. It might be 17. No, it starts at 16, yes. And so, you know, Henry sees it, uh, sees that number carved into Cynthia's chest, and he's like, what's 16121? And later, this will make a lot more sense. Um, but now we're just in this uh, forest area. We've we've went back into the bathroom. We're now in the next world. Um, and I'm, I'm utilizing the camera just a little bit. I'm moving it around ever so slightly just to adjust kind of the, the aim of these enemies. It's very possible to kind of... A, prevent an enemy or a group of enemies from hitting you um, as you just kind of mess with the camera a little bit. Sometimes I get it really well and sometimes I just completely don't. That's that's kind of just the fun of this game. I, I like to think of that a lot of the enemy's movement is very RNG based. By the way, that's Jasper Gain, G-E-I-N, like the like the serial killer, Ed Gein. 
uh, Gein, Gein, I think it's pronounced Gein, Ed Gein. And so there, there are little nods uh, in this franchise. I mean, a little, a lot of nods, you know, like, at least in this game, there's like nods to like serial killers and stuff in it. And then there's a, like a lot of nods to like Twin Peaks a little bit throughout the franchise as well. So I think the influences of this franchise are just extremely, extremely interesting. Um, okay. So we are in Forest World. This is the Wish House Orphanage. This is a very central uh, orphanage in the game. It has a lot to do with the game's villain, uh, Walter Sullivan, who I'll talk about in a minute. Um, actually, we're just running through Forest World, so I will talk about it. So this game is actually, like, the center of this game is not Henry Townsend, the guy that we're playing. He's just an ordinary Joe, uh, wrong place at the wrong time. He'd, he'd been living in his apartment at South Toshfield Heights, uh, room 302, for about two years, and he's been trapped in it for about five days. And as you saw on the fridge, he just had a, an empty bottle of wine and some chocolate milk left. It's good. It's, I respect his, we're going to skip a cutscene where we see a little, 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 little child who's actually a little uh, child version of Walter Sullivan. Um, and we skip that cut scene and now we're going to head back to the orphanage just because we need to uh, release that trigger um and so thanks everybody hey mr live producer good to see you buddy um and so uh yeah so henry had been stuck for about five days and then we we later as the game progresses come to find out that we are trapped in the other world and the the polter poltergeisty i think that's a word uh, manipulations of walter sullivan who was actually someone as a child um as a child as a child, um, here we just gave Jasper uh, this chocolate milk, by the way, and it is a bottle of chocolate milk that he'll just keep drinking. It looks like he's kind of talking into it, like he's just keeping it a little bit away from his face, and he's talking into it like a like a foam cup, like you know how like like when we were, when we were all kids, or a lot of you were kids, you know, we had our foam cups with strings attached to each other, so it was kind of like a little telephone, so to speak. Um, I, I feel like he's talking to whoever's holding the other the other bottle of chocolate milk. So he, in exchange for giving him that bottle of chocolate milk, he gave us a little spade. So now we're going to take this spade and we're going to just dig around a little bit. We're just going to dig around in the, dig around in, in, in these hand roots. These roots look like hands. Um, and now we're going to get a rusty bloody key. Now what we need to do is we need to take this key and we need to go to our apartment. Um, if you actually examine the key, it basically, there's like an inscription on it that says, he who holds this key who shall wander forever. So if we actually try and go back to the orphanage, um, we'll just, we'll enter a, just a looped, uh, just a looped, uh, forest world room where it's all foggy and glitchy and staticky and film grain and stuff. So actually what we need to do is we need to basically offload this and a few more items. We're going to clear up our inventory a little bit. Um, item management is pretty key in this game at, uh, at about the mid, the midpoint and gets really crazy. Um, so yeah, now we've offloaded the key. So yeah, Walter Sullivan, uh, basically the, the, the skinny of it was he was, plot twist and kind of spoiler, born in the same room that uh, Henry Townsend uh, is living in. I kind of looked at the game's timeline before, uh, before we went live, just to kind of, just to kind of brush up on my lore. Um, so this game takes place approximately in 2001 and Walter Sullivan was born in, um, room 302 in the year of 1967. Uh, there was a ritual that Walter carried out that I'll talk about a little bit later where he died at age 24. Um, and actually the events of this game take place 10 years later. So technically, even though he's been dead for 10 years, he's he's still, his his spirit lives on, unfortunately. He's, he's not a good guy. Um, <laughs> and so he's like age 34. He's a 34-year-old poltergeist, you know, just looking for, looking for, looking for love in Silent Hill. Just kidding. Um, or is he? He's technically, well, the, the funny part is, um, so he was abandoned in this room as a baby. His parents just peaced out, left him. Um, the superintendent of South Ashfield Heights, um, this apartment complex that we're in, uh, Frank Sunderland, who is actually canonically James Sunderland from Silent Hill 2's father, um, it, it, they kind of make it sound like their relationship is kind of estranged, so they don't have like the greatest relationship ever. Anyway, we got our key back, and now we're back at the orphanage. Um, all right, so now we're just going to go in here. I'll get, I'll get in some more lore in a second. Um, we're going to read these books on the ground. We can kind of hear a door open and close next to us. Wait for it. There it is. And now we're going to enter this room. Here is somebody screaming. It's Jasper. We picked up the source placard. Uh, and Walt, or I'm sorry, uh, Jasper, he's... Uh, He's kind, he's kind of a hottie in that scene, but um, he's actually on fire. Uh, Walter uh, off-screen sets uh, Jasper on fire. I think it's implied that Walter actually possesses him, um, and then he's uh, set on fire, basically. High schools, thank you so much. Um, and so, yeah, so now um, Jasper Jasper is no longer alive. Uh, he is, he's on fire now. He's very, he's very popular. 
He's, he's so hot these days. Um, and so, yeah, he and he had uh, 17121 carved into his chest. So now you see how the number is starting to increase. Cynthia was 16121, and uh, Jasper is 17121. So now we're in the water prison, which is actually on the edge of Toluca Lake, which borders uh, Silent Hill. So this... This area and the forest world are probably the two areas that we get closest to Silent Hill, even though we don't actually access Silent Hill. We're just grabbing a key from this water prison um, uh, base. So the orphanage is essentially where Walter Sullivan was taken to. Um, Frank Sunderland, I believe, uh, just brought, you know, brought... Uh, Walt, Walt, baby Walter to, you know, what he believed was a good party, you know, adopting children and, you know, giving them good homes, where actually Walter was brought to the uh, uh, Wish House Orphanage. I keep almost saying Hope House. It was changed. It was referred to as Hope House in Silent Hill 3, and then they changed it to Wish House, I think, because of various things, because of because of, because of of reasons. Um, copyright and some other things. Um, yes, this game is on GOG. You can actually get it for under 10 bucks. It's pretty cool. Um, and so, essentially, so this... This water prison is on the border of Toluca Lake. By the way, we're just climbing ladders, shoots and ladders, um, and we're gonna turn a little, little, little water, water wheel right here to get to get to get the to get the juices flowing, as I say. No, we're this this uh, water prison is very. It uses it harnesses the power of water. I think it's kind of kind of kind of ingenious to basically uh, rotate itself. It's really cool, and I'll show you how that works. Um, okay. Now, ja Jas Jasper got, uh, he got possessed by Walter, essentially. All right, so now we're going to go through these doors, and we're going to drop down. Oh, more holes! The a central theme in this game is, is just jump through holes. Climb through holes, jump through holes. So essentially, Walter was adopted, brought to the uh, the Wish House uh, orphanage, which was, but um, or, drum roll, um, operated, owned and operated by a mom and pop shop known as the uh, Cult of Silent Hill. So yeah, the order, the cult of Silent Hill operated this uh, absolutely terrible orphanage. All right, real quick, we're gonna try and do some wheel skips. We're gonna try and utilize, uh, skip the cutscene that executes after we turn this wheel. We're gonna turn this one to the right twice. So, dang, sometimes we get it, sometimes we don't. What I do is I click it with my mouse and then I hit escape. All right, we got one. So one out of two there. Let's see if we can. Let's see how many we can get on this next one. We got to turn this next one to the right four times. Um, so yeah, I use a mouse and the keyboard for this. I always take a deep breath. Two, three. Ah, so close. All right, let's see. Let's see how we do on the last one. We gonna get it? All right, we got it. So up top, we got. Uh, let's see. We got. We got one wheel skip, and this one we got two. Two. Two out of four. Three out of four. Close. <laughs> um. Yeah, so so that's that's one of the big skips in the game. You can save a ton of in-game time. Essentially, when you skip that the cutscene that executes after that, uh, you save quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of in-game time. Otherwise, during the cutscene, uh, just drags on. Hi, Waldo. Um, okay, so now we're going to go back up. More ladders. More ladders. Hope you're all enjoying this absolutely insane run. Playing this game casually can be a nightmare. Uh, if you play this casually and you, you end up at the water prison, don't feel bad if you need to look up a, a walkthrough. Uh, because essentially what we were doing is when we were turning those wheels, we were turning the entire structure of the water prison in order to facilitate and manipulate the movement of these holes. Um... Now, we did skip some cutscenes. We ran into a guy named Andrew DeSalvo, who used to be a guard here and at the orphanage. And what's fun is we're going to open this door with the 0302, which is the uh, the number of Henry's apartment, 0302, but with an extra zero in front of it. Um, now, we're going to skip a cutscene where Andrew DeSalvo, the former um, wish house guard and prison guard, uh, was drowned in water. Uh, if you read the lore of the game, uh, DeSalvo is not a good dude. He's, he's, he's a very bad guy. So, you know, it, it, it happened and, you know, life goes on. Um, so now we're in building world. We're in the next, the next area. So essentially, um, just talking more about the water prison, because this is more, this, we're just in like a nightmarish uh, version of the building world, uh, of, I believe, Hotel Ashfield, directly across from South Ashfield Heights, where, uh, this game takes place. Um... And so, um, yeah, the, the water prison is essentially children who are disobedient at the orphanage. They take them to the water prison for essentially to essentially 
reprimand them and use your imagination. It's, it's a very terrible place. Ooh, we got the double spawn. So those are called gum heads, by the way. Um, this entire otherworldly experience, no pun intended, we're going to pull this ghost key off this ghost and pull this uh, sword of obedience, which is actually going to come in handy very uh, much later in the game. Uh, it's going to help us pin ghosts, although we're just going to pin one ghost, which is actually going to be Andrew DeSalvo, the, uh, the, the dude that we... Didn't see because we were skipping cutscenes, but no, he was there at the water prison. So essentially, the water prison was used as kind of a last resort by the uh, by the order to reinforce their teachings on the children. Um, ooh, we got through the door, nice. Reinforce their teachings on the children so that the children, you know, could grow up and be cult members. So that's essentially how Walter Sullivan, as you know, a baby, was just adopted by the wrong party uh, and just given terrible influences and all that things to become a just a hellacious uh, serial killer. Um, and so every um, every place that we visit are actually in uh, areas in Walter's life that he uh, interacted with. Um, the the detail in this game that's absolutely bananas here. I'm just gonna grab this pet store, uh, the sports key, key I should say, um, is that the order, the cult, actually convinced Walter Sullivan that Room 302 was his mother. Um, he never met his parents, and so they kind of used that against him, saying basically like used it to their advantage and saying, hey, if you go to Room 302, your mother's there. You need to wake up your mother. Your mother is in room 302. So essentially, they educated Walter with these just this crazy cult knowledge um, to carry out a ritual known as the 21 Sacraments and the Ritual of Holy Assumption that will essentially wake up his mother that is room 302. And he believed it. And he believed it. And so he carried out this uh, craziness. So we skipped a cutscene, by the way, and we met a guy named Richard Braintree. Um, who, uh, when, when Walter Sullivan was a child, he actually traveled to South, he traveled to uh, South Ashfield Heights many times from uh, the orphanage. And it, it was also implied that like Walter was, we're gonna skip another cutscene here where we see Richard Braintree uh, uh, interacting with child Walter. Um, and there's gonna be these fungus, fungus monsters. I forget what these are called, but you just run into them and they, they you take damage and they go away. Look at our, look at our green blood, by the way. So I chose green blood because we're on the verge of March. Um, so Walter Sullivan, as a child, actually traveled to South Ashfield Heights quite a bit. And he actually, uh, throughout his life, everyone that he kills, he actually interacted with. So uh, when he was younger, he interacted with Cynthia Velasquez from the from the subway world. Uh, he also interacted with Jasper Gein briefly when uh, Jasper and two of his friends were uh, just poking around in the forest world. Well, real life, I should say, real life uh, orphanage. Um, Walter interacted with uh, Andrew DeSalvo at the water prison, and uh, he interacted with um, Richard Braintree at, uh, at at this place. So this game is actually, it's really cool. You can get it on, on GOG for under 10 bucks. Um, the this playthroughs are super unique. Um, You'll you'll honestly discover something brand new every time. Like the the game's music and just game design and crazy puzzles and just just sound design and just sights will no doubt when you play this most likely make you want to scream. Like that guy. Um so yeah, now we're just leaving uh we're leaving building world. This is the, the building across from uh, South Ashley Heights. One thing we did there, we entered the code 3750 uh, into the keypad. And actually, in order to get that code, you have to go to Henry's apartment and uh, look outside at the billboard across from his apartment um, to, to get the uh, telephone number 555-3750. So then you call that from Henry's phone, and that's how you get the code. And so, yeah, that's uh, that's that puzzle. So it's the puzzles are very like they 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 make you kind of think outside of the box. They don't really hold your hand. You just got to kind of figure it out. And I think it's kind of ingenious, but also, uh, but it's also can be a little tedious on a casual playthrough. Still, though, this game casually is absolutely wonderful. It's it's just a very very the the story is very in depth, and there are a lot of details you pick up. There's four separate endings, um, and just a lot of little things here and there. All right, so now we're going to pick up the Chaos Placard, and actually now we're going to be in a room that has Richard Braintree in it, the guy that we met but didn't see because we skipped the cutscene so quickly, and he's being electrocuted, and, and baby Walter is just kind of chilling there. And then we see uh, the numbers 19121 uh, carved into his person. 
So now, throughout the course of the game, uh, four people have already perished at the hands of Walter Sullivan. He is, even though he's like a, a poltergeist corporal form, he's he's pulling these people into his other world. And what's super interesting is that the game doesn't explicitly tell you um, how he's doing it. But I think it's kind of implied that it's it's kind of like Nightmare on Elm Street where Freddy Krueger, you know, pulls people in when they're asleep. They don't actually say that. Uh, I know, Richard, it's wild. Um, also, here's Walter. He's just kind of chilling here. We're going to just uh, trigger his uh, his cutscene, and he's 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 very nice right now. He doesn't want to kill us. He does try and trick us, though. He talks, you know, he's like Miss Galvin, who's our next door neighbor in room 303, Eileen Galvin. Uh, she gave me this doll many years ago, yada, yada, yada. And he actually drops the doll, and you can pick it up later, but... Uh, I, if you play this casually, um, you you don't want to pick up the doll. Trust me, just just don't do it. It's 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 bad news bears. Just 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 don't don't be tempted. There's there's no achievements. It's just it's not a good time. Uh, but basically, Walter isn't trying to kill us now because uh, he hasn't uh, fulfilled his full ritual yet. So um, we're just running around uh, apartment world. This is actually South Ashfield Heights proper, um, but it's in nightmare form. And so what I'm actually doing here, I don't have a weapon equipped, so I'm using the ready weapon button. So we just run across these leeches and we're not interacting with them. If you have a weapon equipped, um, Henry will just stomp on them voluntarily. So we just went into that, uh, <clears throat> we went into that fridge to get a sliver of paper. We got the keys from the superintendent room, Frank Sunderland, that's uh, James Sunderland's papa. Um, and so now we got the keys and there's all the green blood that we, uh, that we, that we manifested. And now, uh, now that we got this red slip of paper, so every red slip of paper that we find is more or less written by, oh, now Walter's gone. There's that doll. Don't pick the doll up. Don't do it, chat. Don't don't pick the doll up. I implore you. So we have this red piece of paper and we need to read it. But in order to read it, we need to stick it under uh, room the door to room 302. So now we're going to go home so we can read that uh, sliver of paper. Every red piece of paper is actually given to us by the former inhabitant of, um, of this apartment, Joseph Schreiber, who actually experienced the same exact other world that Henry did. Um, he unfortunately died uh, in the apartment and actually the nightmare sequence that we experienced, we uh, witnessed that death. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at these shoes. I'm going to swing. I'm going to look at these shoes, swing to the right. Hopefully I did this right. And I did. Sweet. Um, there's two There's two notes stacked on each other. So basically by reading this note, we can now go. I'm strafing, by the way. By strafing, we move super fast in the apartment. Um, and now the key, a key with a doll on it, not the bad doll, a doll nonetheless, but not a bad doll. Uh, the key to our next door neighbor's uh, apartment has now uh, materialized next to our bed. I honestly can't remember how that works, but basically by reading that note given to us by Joseph Schreiber, um, we have created uh, the opportunity for this uh, key to appear. So now we're going to go and let Eileen out of her apartment. Except um, we walk in and we witness Eileen very, very injured and little baby Walter standing over her. And it's actually implied that Walter came in and tried to kill Eileen, but little baby Walter thwarted that attempt. So now things are going to get absolutely insane. The game's going to turn into an escort quest. This is where things get absolutely insane. Like I cannot emphasize that enough. So, all right, we, we've got the succubus talisman. We're going to use the placards that we found uh, throughout the duration of this game. Oop, don't need to read this. Okay. And now we have created a hole. Okay, everybody. So this is one. We're entering hospital world, St. Jerome's Hospital. That's where Eileen is, but we're in a nightmare version of it. And we're going to skip a cut scene where Walter's seen. Walter's interacting with a recycled model of Claudia Wolf from Silent Hill 3 and turning it into these weird monsters. So this is the halfway point of the game and one of the biggest RNG. Uh, terror points of the game uh we are going to hit a hallway in just a second with 22 rooms 22 doors there's 11 on the left 11 on the right there's a key in one and a locked door in another so if you want to make predict predictions chat uh there's l11 through r11 or i'm sorry l11 or l1 through l11 and r1 through r11 so let's see where we get the key here's l1 nope here's r1 Ooh, R1 key. Uh-oh, chat. This is... Ooh, this is exciting. Chat, I don't know what you did, but you're my lucky charm. Uh, that's very rare, by the way. Uh, we like to get L1, R1, but we got an R1 key, so that's pretty cool. All right, so where's Eileen? All right. I normally play, like, a fun, like, royalty-free rock song when I go through here. All right, so that's an R1 key, but where's Eileen? Are we going to get... Are we going to... Are we... How's this going to go? R6, L6... 
<laughs> L7. Uh oh. All right. These wheelchairs are very mean. You can actually. Ooh. All right. R1, R7. Not bad. See, when you get the key first, it makes it so you don't have to go into these rooms. Um, you can actually just kind of go to each door and use the key on the outside. So I think that was really cool that we got that because we could showcase that. All right. So now Eileen is following us. We have to manipulate her movement ever so slightly so she doesn't get hit by these enemies. Don't get hit. All right. Perfect. All right. So now I'm going to casually coast down these steps, just, you know, taking a breather. Sometimes you just got to, you know, stop running and just kind of go down, go down, go, go down. Go down some stairs slowly. All right, perfect. Eileen's behind us. I'm going to run against this wall. I'm going to wait like just a sec and go through this door. Eileen should be in there. Perfect. All right, so we have a hole and Henry's like, Eileen, let's go. We can get out through this hole. Go through this hole to my apartment. And then we awaken. She's not there. And then we go back and find out, oh, she uh, can't see these holes. So now we're in the second half of the game. Now our uh, apartment is starting to get haunted. Um, when we were in our apartment originally, um, your health actually uh, regenerates a little bit in the first half of the game. But now that we have thwarted uh, Walter's attempt to kill Eileen, now our apartment is getting more and more haunted. Um, there's a lot of different hauntings that appear. You can't see all the hauntings in one playthrough. That's what makes this game really fun and unique is that every time you play through this game more and more, you'll see different hauntings. And there's there's quite a few. And there have been some patches on this version of game, this version of the game to actually uh, showcase more of the hauntings, which is really cool. They're all in the game's code, but there's a weird, like, just data value, integer value, an RNG value that... Uh, isn't programmed correctly. All right, so now this this part is a little janky. Uh, we got to just escort Eileen down these stairs and just hope to God she comes down in a timely manner and doesn't get hit. Doesn't get hit. All right, I hear her. I hear you, Eileen. Okay, there she is. There she is. Please don't kill me. I don't have any weapons. I'm not, I don't want to game over. Yeah, yeah. Oh, she moved. So let's talk about this. If we happen to die, we can continue. It'll be it'll be a little little well, there we go. All right, we're still good. I just got to get some safety health now. So see, this is how quickly the game can turn around. The enemies kind of are RNG movement like, and so you can be having an amazing run, and then the enemies are just like, hold on, hold on a second. Now you're gonna have a bad time. So okay, so now what we are doing now that we've escaped the hospital, we're going to go back to the uh, hey everybody. We're gonna go back to the. Um, hey Phil. We're going to go back to the subway world. We are now going uh, to revisit every single world. A unique mechanic of this game is that the uh, developers actually made it a way to recycle the worlds that we've already been through. Um, and there is some safety health, so we should be okay. If I, if I end up dying, it won't be the worst thing in the world. We'll just continue and just keep going. All right, so... Um because this game gives you a continue. If you actually, cont if you die and continue, I think at least seven to 12 times, this game will have a difficult, a DA difficulty adjustment. So it'll make the enemies a little easier to kill and make you take less damage, which is kind of nice, you know, on a casual playthrough. We're doing any percent on easy, by the way. And this is easy mode. Um, and this is actually the most important room in the game. And I'll talk about this in a second. See, there's a lot in this game. Okay, Eileen's moving, perfect. So Eileen's moving in that game, or in that room. Okay, I can hear her. Great. Eileen's movement in that room is very, very important because we need to keep her close to us here, but not too close because if she's too close, uh, there's a chance that she'll get stuck in a certain room and then is attacked by a certain enemy and then she'll take a lot of damage and it's very bad if she takes damage and gets uh, possessed and we lose uh, quite a bit of time too. All right, so now we're going to the front door. We're going to pick up this little, uh, little, 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 little t train key and a little note lit written by uh, Baby Walter. And now we're going to go back to the subway world. So yeah, hopefully Eileen is a good distance away from us so we can um, do what we need to. Yeah, this game is very mean, speedrun wise. Casually, it's, well, it's also mean, but you can, you know, you can take a little bit more time. All right, so now we're going to run into Cynthia again as a ghost. Okay, she's aggroed, that's good. Okay, I hear Eileen. Okay, hopefully, so we need Cynthia to spawn in here. I'm just gonna listen real quick. Cynthia, please spawn in here. Please, 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 please. It'll, it might take a second. There it is, oh my God. <laughs> Sometimes she won't spawn in at all. When you hear that noise, that means a ghost is spawning into the room. And in this case, it's uh, Cynthia. Uh, we don't want Eileen to be alone with an enemy in a room because if she is, essentially her possession value will go up. The more possessed she is, um, just, the, the higher chances of her experiencing a possession event will happen. All right, we just used that uh, key on that little box and we got a filthy coin. So now we're going to go back to our apartment, which will no longer heal us. So we got to, uh, we got, we got to, we, we got to make like the Bee Gees and stay alive. I got dad jokes for days. All right. Um, 
<laughs> All right, so now we went through that door uh, from our apartment. Or I'm sorry, from the first time we went uh, to the subway, and now we're going to go to a hole and go to our apartment. I hope we don't experience any haunting, like direct haunting events. If uh, we basically, if you see like red flashing on the screen, hear like a noise, um, it means we're taking damage. So we'll see how the RNG, RNG goes. Okay, so far so good. So far so good. All right, now we're going to use the coin on the, uh, on the sink. All right, perfect. So now we're going to ditch some items in our little box arena. We need one item. This is where we have to actually start really being conscientious of our inventory. So we need quite a large uh, open inventory for the next section. Um, and actually, I know where there's some safety health, so we should be okay. We should be A-OK. -okay. Um, okay, so now what we're going to do is so we're, just, we're basically going to repeat what we uh, did um earlier on. So let's talk about some of these ghosts. So these ghosts are actually people that Walter killed uh, earlier to the game. Uh, there are a total of 10 he killed, and then he killed himself, <laughs> and then he actually killed um, Billy and Miriam Locane, who are alluded to in uh, Silent Hill 2 when you read that newspaper and you read about a guy named uh, Walter Sullivan who uh, murdered two children, unfortunately. Uh, there's that safety health. Sometimes you just gotta grab the safety health. And so they were actually his 13th and 14th victims. Uh, victim number 15 was Joseph Schreiber, the former resident of room 302. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Thank you, thank you, thank you again, everybody. Thanks for all the good hype. So this game has a lot of lore, and I love to just go through it as the run goes on and just as, as things progress. Um, and so, yeah, so Billy and Miriam Locane, who we'll see, who I think we've already seen spawn as uh, as the twin victims. Pretty sure. Yeah, we ran into some of them at the water prison. Right, there's a lot less wall men here, by the way. Okay, perfect. So now the next challenge is to get on the other side of this turnstile up here and have Eileen not follow us uh, into... Um, into the next turn. So, so we got Cynthia's commuter ticket. This will allow us... i use the other one. This will allow us to get through here. Eileen, all right. Eileen, stay away. Stay away, stay away. All right, here we go. Oh, I think we're good. I think we're good. I think we're good. Oh, I've become so good at this. So if Eileen is too close to you, she'll follow you down here. And while we're using this now clean coin that we cleaned at our apartment to use on this vending machine, um, here, let's open... Let's use the, use the vending machine real quick. All right, so we use the key... Uh, or the coin on the vending machine, and like most vending machines in real life, we got a murder scene key. I was hoping for I don't know, like a Snickers or maybe a Twix, but I'll take I'll take a murder scene key today. I'll uh, it, it's probably got chocolate on the inside. Uh, I might break my teeth, but you know it's it's aged chocolate, aged to perfection. All right, so now we are at the top of the turnstile. Eileen is now next to us, um, and now that she's close enough to us, we're gonna go through here. And what we're going to do is we're going to go into the murder scene. So this is actually where Cynthia died. Uh, there's a train conductor hat on the ground. I'm kind of sad that we can't pick it up and Henry can't put it on and like cosplay as like a subway conductor. I think that'd be really funny. But anyway, so now we have a, we, we got a train handle basically. And this is going to allow us to uh, escape this area. Um, so I am going to be half talking about lore and half listening. Actually, I might just listen and we'll, we'll move on. So yeah, everyone that uh, Walter killed prior to the game uh, materializes as ghosts. Um, he actually took their hearts to South Ashfield Heights, the room 302, to the store. Ow. That's, that was my head. Ow. Big headache. Um, and he took their, their, their ten hearts and uh, the black obsidian goblet and the white chrism liquid that's uh, talked about in other Silent Hill games and actually the my favorite ending of Silent Hill 2, which is called the, called the Rebirth ending. Get it? Because it's Rebirth. My name's DJ Rebirth. Um, so... Uh, essentially, Walter used those same items to perform the ritual of Holy Assumption, um, plus the hearts, and essentially kill himself at the end and become this omnipotent, uh, this omnipotent uh, poltergeist. See, see how our health is like ticking down again. All right, we're gonna go on this train. Hopefully, there's only one ghost in here, Cynthia. Ooh, perfect. I got two ghosts to spawn in this uh, second train the other day, which is extremely rare. I don't recommend it uh, because they will block your progress. Cynthia always spawns here. Remember, that's Cynthia from the... Oh, she's just crawling. She's just taking a... She's doing some burpees. She's, she's working on doing some burpees. She'll get She'll get them. I know she will. I believe in her. I believe in you, Cynthia. Also, goodbye. All right, so we're going to skip a cutscene where Walter is now pursuing us. He, he's, very, he's big Angie that we thwarted his attempt to kill Eileen, so now he's pursuing us to try and uh, finish killing Eileen so he can uh, move on to his final victim, which is 
spoiler, Henry Townsend. He has to kill people in a very specific order, uh, according to, I believe, the Crimson Tome, which tells him that essentially is a is a tome created by the order to tell him how to actually, like, carry out these rituals. So when Walter killed himself, he created uh, this other world that we've been traversing through. Um, and additionally, he, you know, became a poltergeist. And he, his soul lived on. And so he could just terrorize people in the real world. Um, somehow he pulls them in. Again, I'm, I think it's a lot like, likely like Nightmare on Elm Street, Freddy Krueger style. Um, so yeah, so with the creation of that, um, he's still, that that wasn't like the end of his game. Uh, the end game that he needs to do is kill, <clears throat> excuse me, a total of 21 people to carry out the, uh, the 21 sacraments. And what that actually was, we haven't talked about that yet. Are we going to light this torch real quick? Is that is essentially the backup plan by the order in case like they weren't able to birth God via the means of, um, of Alessa Gillespie and, uh, Cheryl slash Heather Mason from Silent Hill 1 and Silent Hill 3, uh, the backup plan to essentially summon their their, their 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 big evil god is for Walter to carry out his ritual. Um, and actually, you there is an ending called the 21 Sacraments uh, where Walter actually does carry it out. And it's described that like the residents of, a lot of the residents of South Ashfield Heights, um, they, they, they die. We're taking a lot of damage. This is crazy. There's a lot of safety health here, so we should be okay. Um, but, uh, yeah, so so your your actions in the game determine uh, the the fate of the the residents of South Ashfield Heights. All right, there is some safe some super duper safety health that I might just grab just just to, just to make sure things go smoothly. Sometimes just these runs you just take a huge beating. You'll have your health will be up and down, and that's just how absolutely wild this game is. All right, so we're going to pick up the silver bullet. Um, and actually, yeah, there's some safety health in this next room that we're just going to grab. I like that this game is generous with its health. But don't get too comfortable, chat, because uh, this game will get your hopes up and let you down because of RNG and damage. Yeah, sometimes just during these runs, you just got to snag the, snag the health and just keep moving. So we're going to light this torch. Uh, we need to light this torch about five times and examine the inside of these wells. And we're just going to get these uh, mannequin body parts. Um, during a casual playthrough, you can actually take this torch to Henry's... Uh, um, laundry room that we created that large hole in that brought us to the uh, hospital and there's like just a big old gas can that you can just dip the torch in and then it'll burn it'll burn a lot longer and so you can use um one flame to light multiple uh multiple wells to get body parts but in, in the speed run basically you light the torch it's good for like a screen and a half oh eileen you you stay away stay away don't follow me don't follow me in here don't you don't you dare don't you dare eileen we need eileen to stay Okay, we're good. Mm -hmm. Eileen, that's the only room that she like likes to sprint really fast in. It's absolutely wild. Um, so, yeah, we need we need Eileen to stay in that room while we go around uh, lighting our torch. By the way, we're gonna we're gonna see Jasper again. Uh, the, the, he he he's 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 kind of a hottie. I make that joke a lot. No, he's literally on fire from when he got lit on fire inside the uh, inside the wish house uh, orphanage. When he became the uh, one seven one two one. Now, the the number one seven one two one one six one two one. It's actually uh, one six slash twenty one, seventeen slash twenty one, eighteen slash twenty one. Um, and it's later it's later revealed that it's not like just a, a weird number. It's an actual like this out of this, like baseball cards, like number twenty three out of thirty six. It's like that, basically. It's just Walter counting ba counting his baseball cards, but they're people and he's killing them. All right, so now we're going to light the torch again. Um, and go here. So, yeah, essentially, that's that's kind of just Walter's MO. He needs to... He, he succeeded in becoming an evil, big, scary poltergeist. He succeeded in creating his other world um, and pulling people into locations that he interacted with as a child, people that he interacted with as a child. So there are some... There are some things that need to happen he needs to it needs to be a location familiar familiar to him and it has to be a person familiar to him and that's how he's able to execute these uh these murders his first sets of murders were some of the priests of the order um that uh, occupied the orphanage and some just people adjacent to them that he interacted with and so that's how he just basically pulled off his first uh 10 murders there were there were people in the, the order some people in south ashfield heights um, and they're they're the the lower powered ghosts, the ghosts that uh, he that Walter creates um, after 
Uh, he turned into a big scary poltergeist. They're like super OP, overpowered ghosts. So just like Cynthia in her like Japanese ghost Onryo form, and then Jasper in his super, uh, super, super hot form. Um, and so, yeah, now we're going to investigate this. I know, Chad, should I get more safety health? I kind of I kind of want to YOLO it and not, but at the same time, I probably should. Uh, so we'll play it. We'll play it by ear. How about that? We're still going to get a fast time. I just, I just want to stay healthy and focus on Henry's health. So yeah, now, uh, as you can see, you know, I've just been doing these super obscure things uh, with these puzzles, lighting, lighting torches, uh, illuminating the inside of wells, getting body parts. It doesn't make any sense. And that's kind of the point. This other world has been created by Walter and it was created uh, based on like his interpretation of these areas, his interpretation of humanity. Uh, he generally has a very like pessimistic view of humans because he was, you know, he was abandoned by his parents and he came to learn that that's, you know, that's, that sucks. That's not, that's not good. Um, it's sad. It, it's truly sad. And Walter is just essentially a victim of circumstance. All right, we just skipped a cut scene there. We're going to take this medallion and we're going to light this torch one more time. Um, and get one more body part. But yeah, um, that's, that's, that's kind of what's profound about this in general is that Walter was a victim of circumstance. He, he him as, see, there's the, there's the twin victims again. That's Billy and Miriam Locane, by the way, but they spawned, they spawned as ghosts, but in a giant weird bird form, bird-esque form, and lots of them. And what's kind of cool about, I know I keep jumping around, but that's just, this is how this game is. Um, the lore of this game is. Uh, little Walter that we saw was actually an unintended consequence of Walter's Ritual of Holy Assumption. Are we going to use the five body parts on this uh, wheelchair figure that's actually one of the priests, but in dummy form? Let's see for Eileen's footsteps. There we go. Um... Little Walter that we meet in this game, Innocent Walter, is actually created as a result of Walter's existing innocence. It's kind of a kind of a side effect. Um, Walter did not intend to uh, spawn slash manifest uh, little little baby Walter. Uh, he just it just happened, and Walter becomes aware of little Walter's um, presence. I think uh, yeah, at the at the next area we're going to Building World too. Um, otherwise, little Walter's just running around saying, I'm going to go to room 302 and wake my mom, blah, 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 just stuff like that. Um, and so we're just like, oh, who's, the, who's this nice, nice, nice little kid? And actually, I, 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 I fibbed. We're going, to, we're going to the water prison. See, I, I actively, every single time, write the water prison out of my memory because going through it the first time and dealing with that uh, little, little, little wheel turning puzzle is just absolutely menacing. And dealing with this area again, uh, and the end of it that I won't spoil, but you'll you'll all know when it happens, and you'll all be like, "Oh man, I'm glad he healed himself." All right, so now we're in this little water tower, and Walter's waiting outside, ready to shoot us. However, we're just gonna run in here, Eileen. Hopefully, okay, good, she followed me. And now we're just gonna run all the way down here, run all the way down. Get our get our cardio for the day. Get our cardio for the day. Um, See, so yeah, a Walter catches wind of, of, of baby Walter uh, in this world in the next area and he, he basically hatches a plan to possess baby Walter and then you know still wake his mother up so he can be in his young child body and uh, you know abandon his adult body and if you get the 21 sacraments ending which is the worst ending you can get in this entire game I still think it's really cool just the way it's portrayed and then, you know I love horror movies I love horror games so just watching that end, uh, that end ending pan out just hearing you know Walter succeeding in his plan and all the residents dying it's still really really sad but it's 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 just kind of kind of cool to watch unfold um but uh yeah so walter walter seeks to possess baby walter and basically what determines the ending in this game so your apartment gets um more haunted as you as you go throughout the second act of this game um you can actually go through your apartment use holy candles that you find to purify your apartment also you need to be wary of eileen's health uh if she takes too much damage uh, it, she won't die. Like, I think Maria in Silent Hill 2 can die, but um, Eileen in this game will actually just kind of kneel down and just hyperventilate a little bit, and you just got to wait for her to get back up. And we're just waiting for Eileen to appear. She's, she's coming. She's, there she is. Hi, Eileen. Okay. So now we're going to go to this corner, and we're going to use a cool trick called Shoulder Bash Eileen so she doesn't follow us. We're going to use that twice in the game. It's it's a glitch that we utilize. Um, here, it's just more of a strategic thing we do, but in the next area, Building World 2, it'll actually, it's a it's a common glitch used during speedruns, and we're going to skip 90% of the area. Uh, so you'll know when it happens. So now we're going back in here, 
uh, to this this room, the fourth door. We're going to drop down three times. We're going to end up in the room where uh, things ended in this area for the first time, where we actually found Andrew DeSalvo, who we're actually going to see as a ghost later, and we're going to have to fight him. He's actually one of the most difficult ghosts in the entire game to kill. So because we had to, like, free up our inventory and grab a silver bullet and things like that, it's going to lead up to that. So we're going to get this prisoner shirt that's kind of I- identical to Henry's Henry's shirt that he's wearing. Henry's kind of a prisoner of his fate, so I think it's I think it's it's very very poetic and very uh, appropriate. So now what we're gonna go. What we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, go back to Henry's apartment. Now you can actually use the holy candles in game to heal Eileen as well, but. What you want to do essentially is use them, use as many as you can in the apartment to cleanse the hauntings. Uh, so the more hauntings you cleanse, I think you need to cleanse at least 90% of the hauntings for the, uh, the apartment to be considered uh, cleanse, and that factors into the ending. All right, so now we're going to take the T-shirt that, or I'm sorry, the, the long sleeve shirt button up that we found. We're going to place it in Henry's bathtub, which was filled with blood. Uh, that T-shirt was covered in wax. It's no longer covered in wax, and we got a message that's basically saying, "Oh, that prison guard, he's got the, he's got the, he's got the key." Or I'm gonna, I'm gonna stab stab him and actually we're gonna stab we are gonna stab him so we can get the key so what we're gonna do is we got our gun we got the silver bullet we got some extra bullets um and the sword of obedience and uh now all right eileen follow us we're going to equip the gun as soon as i see eileen moving we're gonna go through the door perfect and now we're gonna do one more thing where we're actually gonna take damage from an enemy so we can simultaneously uh equip the bullet and avoid the animation it's kind of a cool cool little little trick there we go we did it all right we're also going to run into these dudes just to avoid them so eileen doesn't take any more damage um i always am super nervous here all right by the way andrew DeSalvo, ghost form with a number carved into his stomach we shot him with a silver bullet that brings the ghost down instantly we're going to stab him with a sword of obedience we're going to get this key beautiful and now we will never see him again thankfully uh, if we if we go to him and and stab him and get the key and then take the sword out he'll appear just later um I forget where. All right, Eileen might smash. Yeah, she she just she loves to just veer into these enemies. All right, so no doubt, I know you all remember the hospital um, being a terrible point in the game. Um, the hospital is not necessarily a run killing section, but it, it can. This section we're going into is legitimately a terrible run killer. Um, those twin victims we found, Billy and Miriam Locane, but in uh, out of control spawn twin form. Um, there's going to be a hallway with about six of them that we need to just dodge and hope for the best. I've gotten pretty good at this hallway, but I, I, you know, I go in with, with low expectations every time because it can get pretty, uh, it can get pretty heavy. So, uh, cross your fingers, Chad. If that's, if, if you like crossing your fingers, now is the time to do it. Let's all manifest our, our, our best, our best good vibes and hope for the best. Here we go. All right, party. Let's go. All right, my twin victims. Everybody follow me. Eileen, where are you? No, don't turn around. Don't turn. Don't. Def- no, Eileen, we're almost there. You just get out of my way. Don't, don't you make me look bad, twin victims. Oh, my God. We did it. GG, chat. We did it. Uh, so yeah, Eileen can get stuck there. Uh, so can so can we uh, take a lot of damage. Uh, so yeah, we almost died again, but we didn't. <laughs> this is literally th- this is status quo for the speed run. By the way, I'm not doing anything special by just uh, uh, other than hanging by the skin of my teeth, and that is literally what a Silent Hill for the Room speed run is. You can have amazing, immaculate runs, but at the end of the day. You don't know how it's going to go because of enemy RNG, because of movement and an escort quest and just all these things. All right. First try. There's actually a twin victim mode in chat. That's pretty cool. All right. So now we're going to go to this elevator and we're just going to have a quick uh, heart to heart with uh, Eileen. I started having heart to hearts with Eileen just because I thought uh, it would just be a good thing to do. All right. So now we're going to go to this elevator. We're going to press this button and we're going to have a heart to heart with Eileen. Eileen, you must listen to me, Eileen. We must escape Silent Hill. We must escape Walter Sullivan, Eileen. We we can do it. We are one. We are teammates. Good talk, Eileen. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go to the bottom. We're going to shoulder bash Eileen. Bye. And so now she will not follow us into this this, uh, area. And actually, Eileen cannot go down ladders. She cannot go down ladders. And so... 
the game utilizes that. It makes you take the long way around to get all the way to this room, basically. Uh, there's there's a bunch of puzzles that you need to solve, just running back and forth, bouncing back and forth like a ping pong ball, and put just certain items in certain areas. Um, there we go, perfect. But because we skipped all that, now we can go here, and uh, Eileen's just going to spawn through here. So this is actually a glitch in the game that prevents us, that that makes it so, it pre prevents us from having to do all these wild and wacky puzzles in this area. Um, okay, good wheelchair RNG. Hopefully Eileen runs up to us. Yeah, there is a lot in this game. This game is absolutely menacing, and it just keeps me coming back because it's just, it's it's fresh every time. It's just fresh every time. All right, so now Eileen's next. I'm going to try and shoulder bash her. Okay, unsuccessful, so she's going to move kind of fast. Um, there's a glitch. It's not really a glitch, but there's a, a technique we use in this room uh, where basically... Okay, so she's possessed ever so slightly. That may actually work to our advantage. So the moment she reaches the bottom of these steps, we can go through the store and pull her through. All right, let's see if we did it. We did it! Oh, I like that when that works. I love it when it works. So same thing with this puzzle. Um, there's a different code to this door. Uh, thankfully, we already know it. It's 4890. But essentially, we when we reach the store, we're like, oh, it's 3750, but it doesn't work. And then we learn, oh, we have to go back to Henry's apartment and have look at the billboard across from his apartment again. Um, to get the new to get the new phone number. So now instead of going all the way up these stairs, now we go all the way to the bottom. And actually, we are about to hit the first and second to last boss fight. I think they call it the penul penultimate. We're gonna hit the penultimate boss fight, and it's actually another RNG uh, terror point. Where basically they are. We're gonna fight a bunch of wall men. There are a ton of them. Um, actually, I think there are twelve. 12 is a ton. 12 is a dozen. Is 12 a dozen? I think 12 is a dozen. Uh, there's a dozen of them. There's a dozen of wall men in there. <laughs> and so um, basically uh, the one truth. So one of them is the real one and it's R it's complete RNG. And one of them is, or many of them, all of them, except for one, are the fake ones. So we just need to prep for this. Uh, I'm going to equip this. And hopefully we'll get some good RNG. This, this, this room we're about to go into is another run killing section. Um... It won't kill our run because we have lots and lots of time on our hands. I told like Dysis 104 RTA, so hopefully, hopefully we maintain that. All right. Uh, I don't like this boss. I don't think anyone does, honestly. So here we go. All right. So the way I do this boss is old style. I wind up the axe. I kind of make my uh, elbow touch this. Please give me good RNG. And then so we whack both of these. All right. Not that one. All right. Let's see who it is. Who's the? Who's the? All right. Nope. Oh, no. Oh, no. All right. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Here we go. Oh, no. All right. Well, now we get to play Guess guess the Wall Man. All right. Let's go to the other side. Um, we might be able to get another shot. We, we should still be able to get through this relatively quick, but now we got to deal. All right. Nope. Is it you? No. Nope. Is it you? Are you the... Are you... No, it's not you? Uh-oh. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's just get our bearings about us. So yes, this is the one truth boss. So now, now we have the hospital. That's a terrible RNG point. Oh, I think it's actually this one. So we actually have to put us put some distance between us and the one, the one that was going down ever so slowly. Come on, it takes a second sometimes. But this is just how crazy this boss is. No crazy. Did I ever shoot this? Okay, no. All right. So it is definitely it's it's definitely the one on the left. Um, so it's a. <laughs> I, I even I just get so entertained because it's just it's just madness. It, it literally keeps me coming back. All right, come on. It's it's that one. It know see it knows we know, chat. It knows we know. All right, but see that's that's how you know which one it is. It just it takes its time going down. All right, one and there you go. Now our, the question is, are we gonna get it without? That? Oh no, it's not that one. Okay, then it's it's one on this side. So yeah, welcome to the one truth. Um, it's 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 the opposite of truth. It's a lie. Two truths and a lie. Actually, it's it's technically one one truth and 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 eleven lies. One truth and eleven lies. All right, all right. Well, maybe it's the third one. Eileen, please stay out of my way. No, no. Which one is it? <laughs> all right. All right, we did the two next to the door. We know it's not this one. We're get, we're we're gonna have to use the axe. Okay, so it's got to be one on on the other wall. So yeah, essentially this 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 is considered a a run killer, like I described. Um, all right, nope. 
All right, so let's try, let's try maybe the second one. So yeah, you're basically, you're, the success of your runs hinge on, all right, it's gotta be a third one. It's not, you, so one, one kind of funny thing that I'll talk about is that you can actually leave this room. You can leave this room to reset the RNG. All right, it's not you. Or is it you? Did I already try you? Chat. I might be completely losing my marbles. I might be completely losing my marbles, chat. I might be completely losing my marbles. We're going to figure this out, though, because I promised Ekdysis I would finish this run. I promised you all I'd give you a show. Nice one, truth emote. All right. So uh, while we're getting through this, does anyone have any questions about the game? We'll, we'll do some open QA while we try and uh, try and figure our life out. All right, it's not that one. It's got, it's like, I mean, does, does anyone have any any curiosities about this game, or have I have I gone through everything? What if it's, it, there's no way it can't be none of them. That's, it's, that's, that's theoretically impossible. It's impossible. You can though, you can exit this room to actually reset the RNG. Um, and what's kind of crazy is that once you, once you kill, all right, is it this one? Did I already try this one? Chad, I am just, I am, I am beside myself. I am, I am literally beside myself. What, what should happen is when you attack the right one, uh, what you're looking at is the one truth boss. And, uh, oh, all right. We found it. Yay. It was the second one. It was the second one from the left. Um, so yeah, Silent Hill 4. Casually, you know, when you're not speed running it, it's, 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 it's a great time. When you're speed running, it's a fantastic time. Uh, when you're not dealing with this boss, but that's just how crazy this is. You go in with limited ammo, um, and you just got to keep making your rounds until until it's all over. So, yay, we beat the first boss. Best boss fight in Silent Hill history. <laughs> oh, look, and Eileen, so now I, ooh, we might get the 21 Sacraments ending, although we won't see because we're going to skip to the credits. So Eileen's doing what I like to call the big limp. So when she takes enough damage, her estate changes, so she's like limping. But actually what's extremely interesting and what's really fun to highlight is that uh, the more damage t Eileen takes um, during this, uh, during this, thanks, thanks for the love, everybody. I appreciate it. During uh, this run, so the more possessed she is, the more erratic she acts. And so the more prominent her possessions are, um, like her possession uh, events. But what's really cool is that it also allows her, we got to kind of run against the wall carefully. It allows Eileen to, um, read a lot of like the inscriptions in Forest World because if you go to them yourself, I, uh, Henry will be like, I can't read this. But Eileen, the more possessed she is, she can read, I think all of them. I think there are some that she can outright uh, read because of just, just, just magic basically. But the more possessed she is, the more of them she can read. So that's why I'm saying like on multiple playthroughs of this game, you can pick up a lot more lore. And this is why this is my favorite Silent Hill game because there's just... The lore just keeps going on and on and on. And it's just, it's so fascinating. All right, we got to kind of take our time. Got to take our time. Let's see if, let's see if we can do the, the 104 estimate that I promised. <laughs> Hanging in there. I think we can, chat. If we haven't already hit it, we'll hit it soon. Um, oh, I have good news. What's up? <laughs> well, uh, I know Silent Hill 4 sucks. I actually gave you one ten. Oh, one! Th thank you. Ek, you are you are a gentleman. I know, this, and a I know this game. I know how it goes. I'm not dumb. <laughs> you are a gentleman and a scholar. Hey, you, you had one. Yeah, uh, since the start of the run, I don't know if you saw the estimate. You had one ten the whole time. Oh, I feel so much this, better. Th this oh. wasn't the GDQ thing. Like, oh, we snuck that in there. If anyone doesn't believe me, rewind the video, oh. rewind the vod. It's been one ten the whole time. Today's uh, a good these day. were originally totally one hundred four, but I I told them one hundred one ten because. Uh, <gasps> Yeah, Silent Hill 4 is a game that no matter how good you are, it will it will hurt. I appreciate that. Today's a good day. Okay, so real quick, we are in room 302 of the past. This is Henry's apartment when Joseph Schreiber lived in it. We're reading a bunch of documents that are going to tell us how to kill Walter. And actually, uh, Joseph Schreiber is upside down on the ceiling. We got Joseph Schreiber upside down cake um, on the ceiling. And so there's a little cool cutscene. You see like little like blood dripping. Okay, so now we're take, picking up this pickaxe. Um, and I got to keep an eye on our health again. All right, hopefully there's no hauntings in the bedroom. Perfect. All right, so now we're just going to go to this wall, use this pickaxe of hope. We're going to um, 
break it open. We're going to go through this hole to the storeroom. And the main villain of the game, Walter Sullivan, is just chilling here. He's he's dead. I mean, his body's dead. So we're just going to get some evil looking keys out of his uh, out of his person, off of his person. The keys of liberation that will help us uh, escape. So now we've escaped the apartment. We did it. Game. The game's done. GG, everybody. Just kidding. We're in apartment world two now. So now uh, the, the the wall has more uh, animated hamburger meat. Uh, there's the, the 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 it's changed. There's more stairwell, more more shoots, more ladders, more enemies, more twin victim. Um, and yeah, we just gotta we gotta go. Um, I am gonna keep an eye out for more safety health, just just because it'll allow us to not die. Um, <laughs> See, I got that 110. Now I can take my time. Just kidding. All right. Uh, there is not health there. There is Cynthia, though. So all, most of the ghosts that are free that we have not pinned down with the uh, pickaxe, or I'm sorry, with the Sword of Obedience, which we normally don't during the run, are here and here to stay. All right. No secret elbow. That's good. All right. So, yeah, now we're just going to the bottom. We're getting to the bottom of this, literally. We're getting to the bottom of this. We're going to the bottom of the... Uh, now we're in uh, Richard Braintree's room. We're, we're visiting all the rooms, basically, except Henry's room, which we're going to return to. All right. So this is where things get kind of interesting. So now we hear a little boyo saying, Dad, where's Dad? Dad, where's Dad? I can't see your face. So basically what we're going to do is we, we're going to see uh, five or six figures of Walter Sullivan uh, kind of just being wrapped in a straitjacket suspended from the ceiling by chains. Um... And we basically need to examine each one and hear another, uh, hear a little, little quote by Walter's parents. Told you, we should Told you we shouldn't have a baby, didn't I? So it's now you get to kind of hear his what his parents did. Shut the hell up. Shut the, shut the, shut the H-E double hockey sticks up. This game has swears in it. I'm sorry, everyone. This game has swears in it. So yeah, basically when you examine these uh, hang hangly dangly bodies, um, all right, there is safety health here. All right. <laughs> We're back, everybody. All right. Uh, so, yeah. We need to examine just two more. So, this will actually release chains that are on Frank Sunderland's door. Um, and we need to release those chains because uh, we got to go grab the umbilical cord that Walter Sullivan was connected uh, to his mother by. Um, when Frank Sunderland found Walter Sullivan uh, in room 302, um, Frank was like... He, he just felt compelled to hang on to the umbilical cord. Just some some, some otherworldly force, other, there's that word, otherworldly again, some otherworldly force uh, basically made Frank be all like, I better keep this umbilical cord and keep it in a box. And it's good, we did. Okay, so now Eileen's here. Eileen, I think, is fairly possessed. So the more possessed that she is, she acts different in different cutscenes of this area as well. That's what's really cool. Like, you just, you get different cutscenes depending on how possessed Eileen is, uh, depending on... All right, we got the umbilical cord. We pulled it through a wall, by the way. Um, you, can, you can just focus on that, that wall area directly to the left of the bookcase and you grab the umbilical cord. So Eileen peaced out. She ran... Uh, I think she heard a little baby Walter, and that's why she peaced out. Yeah, Walter. Walter's parents are, are very, very, very bad. And so, actually, that enemy that we just ran past called Bottom, um, I recently reread the lore about this. There's two lumps on the head. It kind of looks like the twin victim, but it's completely different. It's called Bottom, and essentially it's two lumps side by side, like kind of on the shoulders, and then there's an actually an upside-down person coming out the bottom, and it kind of symbolizes Walter's birth, uh, where he, he was born, but he didn't know his parents. And so just little, like, subtle things like that are just what what I just absolutely love about this game. Just little, like, subtle, you know, little little subtle, like, design things that just kind of allude to, like, bigger details. So you pick up a lot when you play through this game multiple times. Um, and it's just, it's absolutely fascinating. This game, just, it has so much to it. Um, and obviously the, the RNG is pretty, pretty mean, too. So, yeah. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to go back to uh, Henry's apartment. We're going to go into the storeroom, and we're going to shove this umbilical cord into Walter, and it's going to be done. I heard a cat haunting. All right, Walter. Where'd he go? Oh, he's gone. He does that every time. All right, so what we'll do is we'll go into this hole beneath Walter's, uh, Walter's bod body, and we're, we're, our health will get restored. Yay! Yay! And now we're at the final boss fight. So Walter's body, his mortal, well, his dead body has fallen into that recession. 
And the conjurer, which is Walter's body in its other world form, is now here. We have shoved the uh, umbilical cord into Walter's body, and now we're going to pull these eight, eight spears out of the wall. And what you can actually do is you can use a key item while you're pulling uh, these spears, and essentially it will make it so Henry uh, skips the animation of it pulling out, or it'll, just, it'll skip him getting stuck. So you'll be like basically ice skating. So skating with Henry Townsend. And you can see Eileen's over there. She's completely possessed. And depending on how damaged she is, she will just sprint into that big, uh, scary metal ball of death. Uh, we don't want that to happen because if she does, um, she will die. And depending on how much you've purified the apartment, um, that'll determine what ending you get. And again, this game has um, a total of, uh, I almost said eight, a total of four endings. So it depends on how damaged Eileen is. Um, and how much uh, how much you've purged the apartment. So Eileen can take a lot of damage and you, you can purge the apartment or Eileen can take a lot of damage and you can't purge the apartment or you purge the apartment and Eileen's good or the other combination I didn't say. Um, and it basically just determines the trajectory of the ending. So now what we're going to do is Walter's over here. All right, this is going to be extremely interesting. We're going to see if Walter stays over there or if he does a Gumby slide over to us and do what I call a Walter Sullivan street fight. All right, Walter Sullivan Street Fight. I think that I think that's appropriate. I think the run that we've had uh, is it's very symbolic that Walter uh, is is in the middle middle of the road. So we're just going to duke it out with him. Uh, hopefully, get his back up against the wall. All right, we're going to ready our pickaxe of despair. Um, I'm just going to kind of go behind him to ever so slightly manipulate his movement. I'm going to do a big old swingerino. Whee! Right, that may have damaged him. Uh, he didn't. He didn't flinch, so I'm not sure. So we got basically now just got to kind of stay out of his way without getting the, getting the, getting the wind knocked out of us. So we're just gonna hit him with some super shots. He'll jump back a little bit. If his back is up against a wall, uh, he'll just repeat this like pickaxe swinging movement. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna play it safe and just do big swings. I think this will be the the easiest way. And when we swing this and he shoots, we have iframes. Um, okay back so we may have him pinned now but i never trust walter honestly i do not trust him whatsoever so i'm just gonna yolo it and do big 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 all swing arenas all right we should hopefully be good i have oh my walter I, you you're just a class act sir i did a spin a rooney again street fight i'm playing it safe just because walter walter is is big old meanie duty head all right all right there we go. Okay. And time coming up. Sorry. Three, two, one. Time. Good game. Thank Dude. you very much. How did we do? Uh, let's see. Uh, what's your moment of time? Woo! We did it, chat. And I have all of you to thank. All right, we're going to skip right to the ending scene. Um, we got the mother ending, essentially. All right. And we did. We got a 5802 because of all the craziness. So, yeah, that's how absolutely insane this run is. My current PB is 5151 in-game time. Uh, and we got a 5802 because we were running around getting health, not trying to not die, just encountering the worst RNG I've ever seen. Although we did have an R1 key. So that was the one good thing about this game. So, yeah, that's Silent Hill 4 in a nutshell. Uh, I think I think I gave you guys a good a good uh, chunk of the lore and all the craziness. And you got to see a lot of the weird quirks of the run. I think that's a ton of fun. So, um Thank you so much again, Ecdysis and Games Done Quick for having me on Speedruns from the Crypt. I uh, had an absolute blast with you all. Um, this has been an, literally a dream come true to be able to showcase this game in front of all of you because I've been running this game for six years and I've been learning so much about the game and the lore and the mechanics. So it was an absolute dream to be able to do this uh, for you all and I really appreciate it. I speedrun this game once a week every Sunday and then, you know, if I'm feeling it, I do it more. But again, my name is DJ Rebirth, twitch.tv slash DJ Rebirth. I do DJ streams. Again, I'm a real life DJ. I do horror game speedruns. Um, I have a DDR set up in my basement, so I do random DDR and Step Mania streams and, you know, I love JRPGs and all that good stuff. So yeah, follow me on. I'm also DJ Rebirth on all the main social media, Twitter, TikTok, uh, Instagram, all that stuff. So thank you so much again, Ecdysis and everybody. I had an absolutely wonderful time. Thank you again. Good luck to all the runners this evening. Thank you for hanging out, chat. Y'all are the greatest. And I hope everyone has a fabulous evening. Take care of yourselves and we'll see you later. Thank you, Ecdysis. Thanks, everybody. Absolutely. Thank you for that run. I hope you all enjoyed it. And thank you once again, DJ Rebirth. That was Silent Hill 4. Hopefully you all had a fun time. If you have not checked them out or would like to watch more Silent Hill 4, you can find DJ Rebirth in the link in chat. 
Uh, anyway, really quick, we do have some more Silent Hill games for you coming on up, so don't go anywhere, we will be right back. All right, everyone, welcome back from the break. Hope you've been having a good night so far. We do have a few more games for you coming on up, so don't you worry. However, for the next game, before we do get into it, I do want to say a few things just about it. So obviously on Speedruns in the Crypt, we tend to have quite a lot of heavy themes and heavy games. Horror is definitely a genre that will make you feel uncomfortable. There's a lot that goes into it. Uh, the next game actually has a lot of these warnings throughout the game. Obviously with speedrunning, you're not always going to be seeing these. However, I do want to mention that the next game is going to be a little bit heavier than a lot of the subject matter that we do get, even with some of the cutscene skips. I do hope that you will be all right. I'm just giving this heads up right now. Uh, the next game will have uh, a lot of themes of self-harm and or suicidal themes. So do be careful and hopefully you will enjoy it. Anyway, up next is the brand new release of Silent Hill. We're going to be taking a look at Silent Hill, the short message, any percent with Nico Hart. Take it away. Right, hello, hello. Welcome on into uh, Silent Hill, the short message. My name is Nico Hart. Um, I'm joined by commentary by uh, Caves K Caves or Caves Was Taken, if you want to introduce yourself as well. Yep. Hey, everyone. Uh, I'm Cave. I'm going through an identity crisis with my name. So, uh, <laughs> Cave Was Taken on Twitch, Cave Get Cave in other places. It's fine. It's fine. But yeah, um, as Ek did uh, preface as well, this game does have a ton of trigger warnings, as we have mentioned. Uh, we're going to start with the screen here, like the screen here that will tell you exactly what uh, this game does have for its sense of trigger warning. So um, I'll read this verbatim. If you feel that you are at risk of suicide or self-harm, please seek medical and or professional advice, treatment and or supports from experts in the field of suicide and self-harm prevention. If you need immediate assistance, please contact a local hotline or hospital. If you notice someone is, uh, around you who appears to be struggling, try talking to them. One brave step can save lives. And there are obviously, uh, Konami are putting forward like, you know, relevant numbers, relevant websites that you can check out. So again, it's important that you do talk to somebody and it's important that, uh, that we can speak to other people about our feelings and emotions. Um, the prompts uh, that this game does, uh, that obviously do as trigger warnings, is depictions of suicide, self-harm, abuse, trauma, and bullying that some people may find distressing. So, obviously, we want to make sure that we put everything out there so you guys know what you're getting yourself into. Um, I'm going to go back to the main title screen in a second so that we can actually start the run officially. Um... And I think we'll be good to go. But yeah, just to start it off as well, I will be timing this as well because technically World Record Holder is in the chat. So I'm going to try. <laughs> I'm going to try, but I doubt it. But because I, I don't know, I don't know. But what we'll do to start off the run is that depending if you've already played the game or not, um, you would have like just new game. If, you, um, if you've already played the game a little bit, you can press chapter select and then you can just go to chapter one. So that's what we'll do. Um, right, I think it'll be good for timing. So I'll call it out very shortly. All right, let's do this. So uh, Cave will uh, take over commentary just for the starting bit as well. So three, two, one. One second. <laughs> and go. There we go. Uh, I forgot about that little uh, that little prompt <laughs> box there. Yeah, it always happens. Seeking a connection. All right. Yep. Other... Was being quiet there to make sure you got that first cue. Oh, yeah. uh, exactly. Immediately, we got a message from our friend Maya asking us to come meet her inside the villa. This is this apartment complex. Uh, we're currently in a little fictional town within Germany. Um, and yeah, to get started, we're going to see some of the micro movement right away. Uh, Nico is going to be trying to get as far away from this as possible when he examines it, just so that he can turn around faster. Less movement time to the door. Um, and once you hit the top level of running this game, a lot of it is just micromanage in this movement. Uh, you're looking for tight corners. You're looking for immediate button presses, optimal door opening. Uh, it really just the stuff to get every little millisecond squeezed out is just absurd. Literally, um, like we're, like within the last like uh, like the last couple of weeks, um, this run has been taken over world record by 150 milliseconds by vin uh, Vintage Valiant. So it's <laughs> getting extremely tight for his timing at the moment. Shout so, out Valiant! Oh my goodness, mate! It's like it was impressive to see, and I was like, Jeez. I'm not home. I can't do any runs. <laughs> All right, one second. There we go. So we have to be tight on the timing for when we have to 
Professor Skip buttons as well. We should probably also talk a bit about the lore as well. So we're in um, a what is known as the villa within a fictional town within Germany called Kettenstadt, I think it is. And it's kind of like, um, basically, like, this place was kind of going through disrepair because uh, this is kind of based around the time of COVID. And uh, they were trying to get, like, some external funding to try to, like, revitalize and uh, rejuvenate the economy and stuff like that for this place. But obviously, that kind of fell through because of, you know, real world events and stuff like that. So it does kind of tie in very uniquely into modern worlds. But it's the most, I think it's one, like, one of the most separated Sun Hill games that there is because it doesn't really... It's, ooh, okay, yeah, this is not world record anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, if I miss that note, that is, that's world record gone. I'm not even kidding, so I won't be worrying too much about it. Um, but yeah, so we're kind of now entering up into what I believe is going to be like Anita's, I think it's Anita's room or something like that. Um, it's kind of showing like how they've been trying to cope with like, you know, their with parent like parental vocal abuse and stuff like that and like how she's taken a lot of like antidepressants just to try to actually get over the feelings and emotions that she's experiencing she's got uh emily here which is one of her friends constantly trying to actually like you know check in with her like trying to be a good friend because they've all gone through <clears throat> excuse me by the way like i've got a bad throat at the moment um they they everyone here is going through similar trauma because of um not just their friend who has committed suicide, but like this place because of um, the general surroundings and society and like there's a mention of a witch's curse as well that like um, this, uh, the whole villa has become like a kind of a known spot for teenage suicides basically. So um, the trauma has been felt like basically all around so everyone's checking in on each other if that makes sense. Right, we come to our first ch uh, chase sequence, okay take it over for a little bit. Yeah, so chases, we're gonna have five of them total. This is the first one, super basic. The first two are in general. Um, this is the uh, other half of the gameplay in this game, I would say. But we're just looking for, again, tight corners, uh, no bonks. Um, and yeah, that was, you know, sol very solid chase one. Didn't run into any walls, took the corners yeah, pretty like, good. I mean, sometimes <laughs> you can easily, like, you know, just do that simple bonk, and that will actually do, that, 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 that'll take away a lot of time, honestly. So it's surprising, like, just, you know, how tough you have to be on yourself when it comes to the absolute routine, the absolute the best play you can be. And for example, this, like, this little skip here. So as soon as you press X on that bit, you have to skip immediately. Uh, for the text dialogues here, what I like to do is I like to press Why X and circle at the same time <laughs> so that you can skip through it, but also at a point of like, being able to exit to out of conversation down. at the same time. It's just, uh, it's just a nice little fail safe, basically. Um, right, so now we're going over towards Maya's kind of like art studio. I think it's the best way to say it. Also, yeah. we should probably gone, mention right? the monster that we were chasing Where's away from in the first studio? place because we, ha we, we haven't even talked about like the kind of the <laughs> looming threat that is kind of like um, that's been a part of this game. So, <laughs> as a community poll from the Silent Hill Twitter, the name <laughs> of the monster is Sakura Head. It's, it's not. It's it's Cherry Blossom Lady. But, like, you know, if we're going to be official to the terminology, it's Sakura Head. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, um... I do have one yeah, fun sorry. thing about that. Go for it. Uh, all answers are the same because Sakura means Cherry Blossom in Japanese. That's true, that's so true. So, I know it's Cherry Blossom. It's, it's, still, it's still true. It's just Sakura Head. They could have just called it Sakura. I don't know. <laughs> I think we all did also gloss over uh, that Maya is a very good artist, uh, mm -hmm. graffiti artist, and her uh, you know name for her artist name is Cherry Blossom. Just as C dot B dot yep, so Cherry yeah. Blossoms, everything kind of ties in towards oh, itself. You know what I mean? All right, so we've got another cutscene to skip here. Um, there is a lot more lore that goes within these like cutscenes that we skip, and the cool thing about it at the same time is that it's actually like a FMV. Like, obviously, we, we're very used to, like, seeing sort of, like, you know, in-game cutscenes that are, like, all rendered out and everything like that. Those sections are FMVs, so, like, you know, actually film sections, which is kind of wild. Now, here's where we actually get to see some of Maya's, like, sketches. And even in the sketch form, they look amazing. They seem happy. I'm trying to think life. about what else we can say from this so point. But, yeah, we can see more depictions of, like, you know, the cherry blossom happening. And it does a little bit of a skip there at that point. But when it shows a male character that they drew, but we don't know too much about what's going on there just yet. More real reveal for that very, very soon. 
So we have to look over to the section as quickly as you can and then get ready to skip again. You can skip it like just on like the final frame of um, of it like going to its like zero opacity basically. So it's kind of like... That was all weird. To... That, that door took so long hard. to open there. What, what was happening there? <laughs> I guess what well, that's never happened before. Anyway. Hey. <laughs> is, that, is that the thing? But yeah, chase two <laughs> sequence. Once again, like pretty standard. It's just like, you know, run. But we do this nice little tight corner here. So, okay, we can take it over a second here. Yep. Uh, so here it is a, a little strange because you want to take these corners tight. But sometimes if you take it too tight, the cherry blossom will turn around and actually catch you here. Uh, Nico did great. He took it the perfect amount of tight. Um, and this is the end of chapter one. So, you know, if you're live splitting at home, you can go ahead and split either when you're up these stairs or after we skip this cutscene right here. Yep. I can tell you where I am. I'm technically like m about plus 9.8 seconds. But again, it's <laughs> fine. I, like, it's I don't, fine. I, like say, especially with like my, my health at the moment, I don't anticipate myself to be on world record pace anytime soon. Mm -hmm. So it's fine. The, uh, um, yeah, so do you want to talk about the cutscene we just skipped? Uh, that's, yeah. I mean, you know, essentially what happened. Um, oh, I, yeah. Uh, so basically, um, Anita, Maya has graffiti up there. Um, and she looked at social following throughout that bit. There's a little bit of, uh, Anita looking at Maya's social following, being a little envious, looking at her own, um, feeling not noticed. Um, and she ends up jumping from the top of the building, but she wakes back up in the same room, uh, where there is a Silent Hill 4-esque hole starting to grow within that closet wall. And I think it's kind of like, again, a nice little nod, because I think, if I recall correctly, one of the producers, like, had been out of the game of making horror games for quite a while, that they wanted to kind of, like, make these shorter games, like, so that they could kind of get the love for building these kind of games again. And, like, having all these kind of, like, nice little references to the prior works of Silent Hill is actually kind of, like, is it kind of like a, I'm going to say unique, but not kind of unique, but still, it's... Still nice at the same time, if you know what I mean. Okay, so yeah, I just got to remember, got to move out there. Um, so yeah, but like touching on what Cave said there as well, it's like this is now like essentially the second loop. So again, like you know, like you die in the game, you got you die for real, but it's kind of more like um, that it's going further into the disarray of what's essentially like Anita's guilt and like the the emotions that she felt all the way through, um, like the. The, the experience of her dealing with like Maya's death, basically. This. So yeah, and one second, I just got to cough for a second. Excuse me. And uh, you know what? I should probably hydrate. You guys hydrate uh, yourself. <laughs> yes. Um, and another bit of movement tech is also while you're either mashing through text messages or you're skipping cutscenes, uh, it's always good to just have your joysticks pointed in the direction you need to go, so that frame one you're already. Oh yeah. You know, sort of that's turning like, that's and huge in the right more place. like for that's huge for movement uh, situations as well. So um, it's basically just hold forward, <laughs> always forehead basically. Um, and we're going to be coming up to another cutscene. But what well, here's an interesting thing about this uh, this text message experience here is that like we'll notice that the text messages this are the same for within the first loop. Like so before. now that we've actually like um, experienced the first loop, we can change the way that the conversation has been held and obviously get different responses if you know what i mean so now we can see that we're immediately going into conversation about uh you know wait Maya is actually dead yeah like um and amin is just kind of like this is a bit out of the wood like out of the woodworks like we know we've all experienced this but it's just kind of like you know it takes uh, like the matter of fact like she's so talking about it again me, and again like it does concern amin a little behind. bit um but again, Emily's being as good of a friend as they can be. They want to make sure that they're well, that, you know, that's, uh, that they're, they're taking the medication, that they're going to therapy. Um, good friend. Like, Just good friend stuff. Skip cutscene. I, me and Nico are writing notes for this. Okay. Uh, you know, we were replaying the game, actually watching all the cutscenes, and I feel like I understood the game much, much better the second go around. I In our notes, I have crazy... Uh, <laughs> me just rambling theories of like, are these actually from Amelie's point of view and not Anita's? The notes are a disaster. Here we look at yeah. a quick college brochure. Um, there's been some talks about going to college and some of these text messages that we're blowing by. Um, Amelie's going to college, has plans to go to college. Anita, uh, not so much. Yeah, so this is something is going to, is technically Amelie's apartment as well, or like their family apartment at the same time. So 
Um, we can actually find notes from um, Emily, like, you know, diary entries that kind of like show that they're excited for going to, to college and like, you know, they're ready to be a freshman. But then um, it doesn't obviously go as planned because this is exactly the kind of time when the disarray of uh, COVID-19 actually does hit the general surroundings and then it stops the, the, the financial plans for the, for the building that the, the parents have to go bankrupt, basically. And um, it's, I think it's at the point where the mother leaves as well from the family and um, basically things just don't go right. Now, instead of us going towards the art studio again, we're now going towards uh, what is going to be the school area, which is going to be, I, I think it's the representation of it's either Mygen, is it Mygen bullied or Anita getting bullied? I can't remember. My, yeah, Maya's being bullied. Yeah, so um, there's a few references in some of the text messages or the the cutscenes that we're skipping. We're kind of filling in the blanks here, lore wise. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Speedrun, we tend to not totally pay attention to it. We skipped over nope. a whole, you know, Amelie being uncomfortable around her brother bit in the section we were just in. Um, so it's definitely, you know, there's pretty solid depth within the story and a lot of stuff that can be missed if you're just going for the, you know, shortest route possible. Mm hmm Now, this bit's interesting as well here because we're going up towards what is the witch's locker. And uh, once we've obviously seen this cutscene, this is when the, the major representation of bullying starts to actually happen. And I feel like this is one of the coolest, like, looking, like, outside of the context of what this bit is, this is one of the coolest scenes made within a video game I've seen in a while because like once you got past this little section here of all the like the waving text and stuff like that as well you then go into like a sort of like a, a disjointed um let's say Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time that like that one little walkway bit if you know what I mean um but it's a kind of like it's showing like how because of all the emotions and experiences that she's feeling uh, like it's really twisting and turning her life around a lot to a point that is becoming almost too much, if that makes sense. Um, I'm just now understanding the witch locker metaphor to the curse witch. In, yeah, the, like, exactly. The town. So, That's nuts. <laughs> shall, we, uh, shall we talk about the witch bit then? Because, I mean, we're coming up very soon for the library, but we might as well get that out of the way. Right. Um, oh, we so do have like chase three a, here, though, right? Yeah, we get yeah chase three first. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So here we I'll go. I'll let you. Uh, I'll let you focus for this first bit. Yeah. So we'll talk about the interesting thing that we're doing here in a second, which is going to be uh, looking behind us, which is a thing that you can only do whilst you're running. We want to kind of keep uh, a Sakura head or Cherry Bottom Lady kind of like in view as we look around because they won't spawn in front of us as we do that, basically. And then the rest is just easy peasy from there. Like yep. it's, it's really cool development from the community that we were trying to find like the best way to do each of the chase sequence, and like to know that like when we were like none of us were really utilizing the lo the look back strats, and when we found that it just changed it changed a lot for that chase free section so well. So you know, Why good good job team. <laughs> Ectizes with the comment of the real killer being the <laughs> having to buy a PS5 to play this. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> they did technically, so it's, it's not incorrect. Um, I mean, the reason I got PS5 was for Final Fantasy 16, but that's completely valid as well. Anyway, um, yeah, bearing in mind, this game it did come out uh, shadow dropped from the state to play 31st of January 2024. So this is a relatively new entry in towards the Silent Hill franchise. Um, and look... When it, like, I'm in the UK, it's like 5.43 a.m. for me right now. You can imagine when the state of play is as well, that like when it got shadow dropped, I was desperate to go play it, and I ended up starting it around 12.45 a.m., I think, to play Dedication. that full game through. I mean, we're, yeah. we're, like, come on, it's That's a new great. Silent Hill game. Okay, so here's the next oh, thing as well, like, is that we've seen more of the art book that, um, uh, that Maya's drawn. And we kind of gone to a point now that we've seen that, um, you know, she's acknowledging more about like, you know, potential love interests, like of uh, a, a male that she drew and then also acknowledging Emily, uh, but no acknowledgement for Anita just yet. So it's kind of interesting to see like what kind of um, like the, the kind of emotional stance that she's representing her force into the drawings inside of the section here, like inside of the library is a book that kind of like defines about the fact that there was a witch's curse that happened within Kennesaw, Germany, within like the whole, no like, like just the general surroundings as well, that did affect like uh, basically 
like uh, everyone, like you know, cause like um, more, like I think it's like more teenage suicides, more domestic abuse stuff like that. Like basically, that witch's curse, like kind of afflicted everyone in that. And we kind of find out a little bit down the road as well that like it's um, is the grandmother of us basically. It's, it's our grandmother who was the witch in a in a general nutshell as well, which is kind of like. Another reason for witch's closet to be our closet, I think, as well. No, it's not our closet. Our closet's the one over to the left, isn't it? Maya Dude. is the <laughs> one with the witch's closet. You're way I over my know. head at this point, but uh, <laughs> it yeah. is, I feel like I'm learning. <laughs> <laughs> like, there's a lot of stuff that goes on for this run as well, you know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. again, there's so much lore that we're skipping and that we're missing right now. It's generally, like, if you do have a PS5, I know, Sag is PS5 exclusive. It's worth giving this a shot Not because true. this is genuinely a really fun game. Now, fun little thing that we could do here is that, like, technically we're supposed to do a um, <laughs> a number to color thing for the word liar that's on top of the um, the table here. We can skip it because we already know the, com the, the combo <laughs> for this. Any, it any is puzzle skippers yes, in chat? Yeah, <laughs> any puzzle skippers, yeah. <laughs> Zero three one two. It's very easy to miss input that because of latency, which is again another reason why I don't think I've even talked about how I'm playing this. In the, <laughs> seeing as we've got a three minute cutscene in a second, on um, is it inside the book? Remember Excuse me. When um, I, I had to go for that. Um, like this bit here is basically a three minute like um, permanent thing that you have to listen through. Um, I have managed to skip it once, but to a point that it kind of hard locks the game. But technically, it could be skippable by way of like bringing up your phone by pressing the uh, touchpad bits and kind of like somehow skipping it. I don't know how I did it. Still, it's a thing anyway. But um, I wish the, the way that I'm playing this as well, which is going to be interesting for some streamers uh, who may be in the I chat as well, is that I'm actually playing it through uh, PS Remote Play because when you do it through PS Remote Play, you actually get to keep the uh, the controller sounds that would happen that, that goes through into the PS Remote Play. So otherwise, if you're playing this just like, you know, uh, just a console capture into, say, your Elgato capture cards, uh, you wouldn't be getting that, like, that or that uh, controller audio as its own input into the system so that's the reason why i played this way so i kind of like project it out for obs mute the ps remote play switch one monitor so there can be the hdmi feed so it's like absolute instant latency it takes a lot of brainage to do this sort of stuff. <laughs> you're, doing, you're doing amazing, dude. I mean, oh, you're nailing you, all the, you know, you're getting all the cuts, you skips and the phone conversations. It really is, uh, you know, you have to, the main bit of speed run in this game is is knowing, you know, when every cutscene is coming up and to start skipping as soon as you can. Because again, every, every millisecond matters. I think myself, Nico and Valiant are all spread apart by like yeah, less than a second. Seconds, literally, yeah. it's, it's unreal the, how tight this run has down. become. It can get lower down a little bit, but it's just you have to get the, the most best run you can, if you know what I mean. So it's it's tough. Uh, Did right. we talk about what this note is? Uh, Not yet. No. Do, do you want to quickly uh, talk about it before we do chase four? Yeah. So essentially, um, Maya and Amelie were conversing through notes. Um, Anita hid this one specifically from Amelie that sort of really shows that Maya is struggling with the bullion and wants to sort of run away. But um, um, uh, Anita, thinking that Maya was stealing Amelie away from her, uh, hid the note, and eventually Maya ended up uh, killing herself. And now Anita feels blame on that. Uh, anyways, here is Chase Four, which is the real, real run killer doozy, which of course Literally, comes after the three minute cutscene. With, <laughs> with this one door skip that we do, it is make or break for if you get a world record. It's not even getting the good way to know if you the. For you to turn around there it is for the sound of your phone to start glitching that's why i use my audio cue for turning around we kind of got to wait for sakura to come through and we're going to leave as soon as they start turning towards the right take the optimal routing again and then you use a different cue as me for that part so that's kind of interesting but yeah we're about to yeah, see yeah yeah so we're both learning okay <laughs> let me get some like uh some just some blesses in the chat for this section because this is if I get a first try, I'll be happy. If not, I'm going to try again for a couple of times, <laughs> and then I'll just do the backup on the third. Here we go. I got it first try. 
I can't believe I got the door skip first try. Let's go. <laughs> Sick. Sick. That is so hard to pull off and pulling that off first try on a mar like on a marathon presentation. I am thrilled. I am so thrilled and probably Caves is uh, shaking in the booties. <laughs> Sick. I've got nothing to say to that. Like that takes that's milliseconds. Milliseconds of like uh, of um of where that can just fail, do you know what I mean? Caves, you want to take over for a little bit? My voice is starting to kill just a tiny bit, sorry. I jumped off yeah, you're back now, you're back. Yeah, I'll take over for a second here. So I forgot to skip the cutscene there. Like I was, I was coughing a little bit there, so uh, apologies. Um, I'd lost about maybe like, I don't know, like five to 10 seconds there, but it's fine. But like, we've now woken up on our third loop, which is um, basically where things get into more of a disarray. And um, we get up to a point now where like, if you actually look at this newspaper in front of us, it's the first real reference to Silent Hill. And uh, the Silent Hill reference is the Silent Hill phenomenon, in which basically uh, people can experience like a fog-like state, or like they they suddenly lose consciousness, which is a case of um, basically what people like to say is there's COVID brain fog. You know what I mean? So, Wait, yeah, like I, I can understand that very here. well, basically. Um, and now <laughs> I went to Anita's apartment, uh, well, the family apartment, essentially. Nope. Uh, right, and you should be back, Cave. So let's uh, I, continue from here. Yeah, <laughs> I am back. Uh, this is when the story really starts to uh, feel a little heinous. But um, what we're what originally appears as like a nice household, nice and clean, um, we're starting to read as um, essentially Anita's mother. Uh, the father leaves. She meets with another man. Um, the new guy isn't exactly taken to the kids, and she's blaming it on the kids for him becoming slowly distant. Uh, you see the house becomes more and more of a wreck. And essentially what happens is you're reading uh, notes that these kids are being Stop. locked in uh, the closet, essentially living in a closet. Um, and as we come into this next room here, we're going to enter that closet itself and read an article about um, the younger brother of Anita actually passing, uh, <clears throat> being trapped inside the closet. Uh, Anita was able to escape, though. Um, you know, uh, Child Service has found the, her brother in the fridge. Uh, now we're on to the last chase of the game. So go ahead and kill it, Nika. There's always that big like lag spike when you enter this little bit. So don't <laughs> right. worry if your it's not your PS5, it's everybody's PS5s. Um, all you gotta do for this little bit is just collect, so I think it's like five um, memories of the past and it will unlock uh, chains off a door. Sun Hill for the room reference basically. So there's a lot of like Sun Hill for the room references in this Ooh, this one bad. That's gonna be interesting. I believe. There's a uh, stalker ahead, cherry blossom. Uh, can definitely do some interesting things here. Um, Board has a very funny clip. Shout out Board of Speedruns, by the way. He's done a lot of the uh, chase routing. Um, he has a very funny clip of of Sakura dead appearing at an incredible spot. Um, but there is a bit for our current route. Sometimes cherry blossom appears around one of the final turns. Uh, we think it's just based on. If you're smooth enough, she won't show up. If you mess up like a little bit, there's a chance. So, uh, you know, hopefully, when uh, I was hopefully out, we're good here. Taking a lot yeah. of bumps like that one just there as well. So here we go. Well, I meet Cherry Blossom Lady around the corner. <laughs> Otherwise, you probably just turn around and yeah, exactly. It. It's no problem. Oh, that's Behind so us. weird. That's very again. Uh, <laughs> sometimes just this chase. Uh, she likes to sort of give. She likes to mix us up yeah, with the yeah. way she appears there. Still, like that's fine. Like you know, like we still got through that whole chase sequence, like pretty fine. Mm -hmm. uh, that is like basically the fastest optimal route that has been. Like I think it's been calculated by multiple people of the uh, the short message community. Like we've always spent time on just like different routings, like making maps stuff of that as well. So it, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Now. We're coming up towards like the last like few sec, like the last minute or so of this run, basically. So, um, 
we kind of like we're back into Maya's art room again. And then we get to read a newspaper in a second, which basically highlights the fact that Anita's been no, um, Maya's been dead for half a year, basically. So Anita's been kind of like she has been staying in this villa for half like half a year without even kind of realizing and kind of like I guess like the guilt has become so I've much for her that like she was going time. through a lot of different like you know mental tribulations that they just had to like take for you to kind of take me. their time to realize it Please if that makes sense. Um, and just it's kind of like all come die. down to like you know the uh, the guilt, the distress, the jealousy, and it all kind of like you know. Uh, like blurted down to one like huge outburst basically at least that's what i feel like anyway so is this? Mm -hmm. and yeah, we actually find out that reveal. maya she draw this? had acknowledged anita because it kind of ties back to what you were saying earlier on cape wasn't it that uh you know they're hiding everything from each other and that like you know i think it's at a point as well of, sorry my voice is really cracking out now so. <laughs> now you're a beast <laughs> Uh, good, uh, do you want to take it last bit? Because my voice can't come out of it. Yeah, absolutely. So here we're kind of just getting sort of a recap of all the events that we've sort of learned about. Uh, so that first one is just Anita, uh, who also sort of brought up throughout. Uh, she also draws. Uh, so the first one starts saying, oh, my mother liked the first picture I drew for her. The second one, uh, looking at the bully desk of Maya. Uh, the third one, we're looking at Maya's sketchbook where, you know, Anita's reminiscing that she actually did notice her when Anita uh, previously was feeling unnoticed. Oh, time's coming up in a second. I'll call it for time very shortly. Mm -hmm. um, it's basically going to be where we kind of lose, like, you know, um, camera movement and stuff like that. And I'll kind of, like, look down to kind of help me figure it out. But time will be now. Wait, that's so smart with the looking down. Yeah, it just like, it helps <laughs> us to know exactly like, the right kind of framing stuff like that. And now it's about maybe, I think it's about, like, 28.05 altogether. So as a... Marathon run, getting the, uh, the door skip first try as well. Honestly, that was not a bad run. That was, that was super sick. Hell the uh, yeah. the the first the first time Chase Four is was I, yeah, that like, really is nuts. Again, like it takes a run is like you know it's it's so RNG, but no if it works or not, that. because like it's um you have to get the perfect lineup you have to get like the right kind of movement i mean that guy's just been there about for me as well like you know that door skip is not nice at all um, <laughs> um did you want to quickly wrap up uh, cave and what like discussing is all about here and then we'll kind of uh, bring it over to the next run yeah absolutely uh the so final cutscene. um anita's admitted her guilt to amelie you know, letting her know that she held the letter back. Um, and in a moment of guilt, she's considering, you know, jumping. She apologized to Amelie, says, I'm going to go apologize to Maya now. Um, but Amelie, as she's done throughout the whole game, being a good friend, checking up on Anita, uh, really convinces her not to go do with it. Um, and after the credits, you end up getting a little, like, tweet from Amelie saying, oh, I'm excited to start college. Super glad to have my good friend Anita with me as well. So Anita ends up. Uh, attending college as well, which throughout the whole game she seems very not about. So, so nice. And then we see this final art piece as well of Emily and I think Anita kind of like holding hands together as well. So it's uh, it's kind of like a bittersweet artwork ending of the whole experience, basically. So yeah, not bad, not bad. That was um, a great run. Yeah, I yeah. Think so. I, I'm. I'm very happy with the way that went down as well. Thank you, Caves, for uh, commentating as well. Um, did you want to do any plugs before uh, we switch over? Um, yeah, uh, on Twitch, I'm Cave Was Taken. Uh, I stream a little bit of this. I mostly do Returnal if you're into that game. Um, and yeah, just super quick shout out also to Valiant, who's been in chat. I see Big Scared, who I know is on the leaderboard. Mm -hmm. um, and also Board of Speedruns, who couldn't be here because time zone, fatality. Yep. But uh he put in a lot of work with the uh, the routing and, you know, the chase sequences. Uh, so shout out Board also. And then shout out Nico for a super sick run and also <laughs> putting in a bunch of time into this run. Thank you so much, man. And again, if you want to find me, uh, you can find me on Twitch.tv forward slash Nico Hart. Uh, Nico Hart on most of the social media. Sometimes like, you got to add hello, Nico Hart, because fucking Twitter and stuff like that, sorry. Swearing at the very end of it as well. Um, but aside from that, you know, thank you very much for having me on board. Uh, Ek, uh, speech from the Crypt is like my second time being on here as well. So thank you for inviting me. And yeah, like uh, uh, thank you once again, everybody. And enjoy the rest of the, the show. And I will finally get some water and look after my voice, man. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you both for being here for the run.
Uh, thank you, Nico, for uh, doing this with COVID. I really appreciate that. It was a fun mm-hmm. run of the short message. Uh, if you didn't join Nico Hart, you can find the link in Twitch chat where you can find a lot more horror gaming and I guess general challenge gaming. Uh, anyway, really quick, we do have one more run for you tonight, so don't go anywhere. We will be right back. All right, everyone, we are back from the break. We have one more run for you tonight. Hopefully you enjoyed this look into the Silent Hill franchise a little bit. It is always nice when we get to celebrate new games. It doesn't happen very often. And it's always nice for a variety of franchises, including Silent Hill. And that being said, for the finale, we're going to be looking at some of the origins of Silent Hill, but not the actual origins, but Silent Hill Origins specifically, which is a prequel to Silent Hill 1, the original game. Anyway, Silent Hill Origins will, is a pretty neat run that is a PSP game that is quite frequently played on other platforms, and we'll be taking more of a look at that. Anyway, here is Silent Hill Origins, any percent, with Exterior Emma. Take it away. Hi, everybody. I'm Exterior Emma. I'm a trans speedrunner who is sometimes good, and I am very happy to have uh, been invited to come on to show you Silent Hill Oranges. <laughs> or, uh, I know it says Silent Hill Zero, but that's because it's the Japanese version. Um... I am happy to report that since the last time this category, any percent, has been on the hotfix, the rat has changed a little bit, and I am very excited to at least show you the minor differences, at least now get this time uh, under 38 minutes IGT. Uh, that being said, uh, we're going to go into new game. We're going to bump up that brightness, and I'll count you down to start in three... Two, one, go. So Silent Hill Origins follows uh, our favorite trucker trucking buddy, uh, Travis Grady here. Um, uh, You don't really, what's the best way to describe him? I think all I can do to describe him is that, yeah, he, he drives trucks and he drives trucks and yeah, that's kind of it. Um, unfortunately, um, compared to a lot of other Silent Hill games, I feel like the story for this one is a little bit more light, and Travis is a little more, uh, I guess bland, uh, but that doesn't really matter much for a speedrun. So, but yeah, we're Travis, we stopped in the middle of the road, we go down the street here, and turns out a house is on fire. Immediately, we're gonna inventory pause buffer at the top of those stairs in order to save at least a couple of seconds, IGT. And we're running through now. So why is the house burning down? Hmm. Well, it has to do with this child right here that we are now rescuing. This is Alessa Gillespie. Uh, this is the uh, girl from Silent Hill 1 who is kind of responsible for the nightmare uh, you know, happening in the town. Um, she's the one who splits her soul in half to create Cheryl, and thus we've got Harold Mason coming out uh, and being the best dad ever. Uh, at least, you know, compared to many other dads. Um, so, this is, this takes like no time at all. We're just kind of running through this, kind of run through the motions. It's all cool. And we've rescued her, but we pass out. Because as it turns out, uh, Travis is an asthmatic, and running, uh, you know, headfirst into a fire like that uh, is going to aggravate it really terribly. And we're going to see very soon uh, why that why that was a bad idea, and why, uh, you know, having asthma is no fun. But he wakes up in Silent Hill, and rather than just decide, okay, I'm going to leave, no, I got to see if that girl's okay. And we just so happen to be right next to the hospital. So we're coming on in, and here it is. He's starting to run slow. Uh, Travis Grady, this uh, this twig of a man, uh, because of his uh, his asthma, uh, he has terrible uh, jogging like ability whenever he's low on stamina. And those kind of values fluctuate between whether you're indoors and outdoors, which is a lot like Silent Hill 2, as a matter of fact. But um, unlike Silent Hill 2, we can't do any um, quick save shenanigans in order to save that stamina. So we have another method we'll get into in a minute. 
Um, but now, facing up against an enemy here, um, it doesn't really matter that much. It's like fairly underwhelming there. There's Alessa right there. She puts her hand on the mirror. And this is the main um, gameplay mechanic of the other world in this game is if you touch a mirror, you go to the other world. Uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, we don't see the other world operate how we know it until like the very end of the game. Uh, when we have to go then, you know, defeat the final boss and basically cause the events of Silent Hill 1. Uh, anyways, we are now getting a golden egg, like it's from a golden goose. We're going to make a great omelet with it in a, in a second. We're going to go down here and we're going to solve a quick little puzzle. Uh, this is basically for the main objective of this section of the game. Uh, the solution is 312, 319. Uh, that is uh, a descending list of ages uh, from a patient order. And from it, we get a fake heart. And that fake is in the biggest air quotations I can give you with my, uh, my static uh, picture here. Um, because, you know, it's Silent Hill and sometimes shenanigans like that, um, you know, it says, oh, this thing isn't real, but as it turns out, it very much is. We're gonna equip the scalpel. We're kind of gonna prepare ahead of time. We're gonna pop in the egg here. Turns out we're not making an omelet. We're just unlocking the bathroom. And then here we're going to collect, I believe that is a liver. Going out here, uh, there's another key right here as well. Um, so this is going to be kind of the loop for the rest of the game in all of our little major areas. Um, every part of the game kind of operates like a little mini dungeon of sorts. And you kind of have to switch back and forth between like a light and dark world sort of thing. Like it's a Zelda game. Oh, by the way. Oh... We get the toaster and oh movement memes oh I'll, I'll uh i'll gladly explain that in a second but uh yeah so you're noticing already that yeah travis uh he has kind of problems with his stamina um keeps running slow um but to manage that we're gonna need to pick up drinks in a second here uh Oh, this is the puzzle. We got all the pieces of the body parts right here. And we take this fool's eyes. And yes, I, I did mention we did get the toaster. Uh, an Origins run is never complete without the toaster, but you can uh, get in there and grab that key to get into that examination room without grabbing the toaster. It's a little tricky sometimes. You kind of have to look at the wall while going at it, but sometimes you might go a little too far. Uh, we're going to go over here. We've got to insert the eyes here. Um, uh, in the next room after this, it turns out we stole these eyes from a nurse enemy. Which is weird, considering it doesn't look like they have eyes. But that's whatever. We are now at the first boss. Oh, come on. So, combat in this game. Weird. So, uh, something that this game decides to do which is quite annoying is that every epic every weapon except a, a gun is degradable so after like some weapons it's like after 10 hits it breaks so for combat we have a couple different attack types um which is true of quite a few different silent hill games but this one feels a little extra weird because of Again, that system of weapon degrading. So sometimes you can do a light attack by just tapping the button while holding the ready, like that's R1. Um, or for the PSP proper, it's just R, but I am playing this on a PSTV. Um, weak attacks very easily degrade a weapon. You don't do a lot of damage with them. So what you should do is you should hold down the button for a strong attack, right? Well, for that to work, we need to, like, charge up the weapon, and that takes too much time, and it leaves you kind of vulnerable to potentially suffer QTE attacks from enemies, which is obnoxious. So our best course of action in fighting boss battles, which, by the way, here he is, um, just as a normal enemy now, you have to basically flick the stick and hit the attack button at the same time, and you'll do, like, a big swing, which does the damage of a strong attack, but is more efficient and, you know, speedy. So 
So you may have noticed I have picked up an energy drink and I have picked up a health drink. Uh, this is what we're doing now. Uh, in order to maintain uh, Travis's horrible stamina, thanks to his asthma, we are chugging uh, energy drinks. I like to think that what he's drinking, despite the fact that it's the 1970s, is he's drinking uh, Ball's energy drink, which is uh, the ginger ale flavor. So why is this important? Well, when you're outside, uh, recovering stamina takes an extra amount of time. And of course, that means it's slow. So we need to pick up uh, energy drinks at set points. As it turns out, uh, if you can go into certain maps, like map areas where energy drinks will spawn uh, with the right conditions, you will get the energy drink spawn every single time. So that means this run has item manipulation. Uh, that was a thing uh, that got showcased last time this category was on the run, uh, sorry, on the hotfix, uh, last year for the Silent Hill 3 20th anniversary special. Um, it's this item manipulation. Um, we'll get to some of the differences net between, like, that happened since then, uh, coming up in this next area, but what you need to know now is that in order to get the energy drinks, you need to hold on to two separate healing items and your health needs to be over 80%. Uh, you know it's over 80% when uh, your status screen on the inventory is green. And uh, those two healing items is you need a med kit and you need a health drink. Uh, if none of these conditions are met though, you won't get uh, the energy drink, which can be a little problematic. See, right here, so this is a spot. If we didn't meet our conditions, either we'd get nothing or we would get a health drink. Though I believe at these certain spawn points in like an extreme situation where like you have like a certain val number value of healing items plus like almost no health, um, you can get an ampule. But I've never seen that personally happen, like even casually. But we're here at Smith's Grove Sanitarium because we met Lisa earlier. Um, we had to skip the cutscene because a lot of these in-game engine cutscenes uh, makes the in-game timer run. So we have to skip them as soon as possible. And she said that, oh, my, uh, Dr. Kaufman's here as well. And you know, we skipped his cutscene. And Travis thinks, hmm, I need to follow them and find out what's going on. So uh, the first thing we're gonna need to do after then you know, skipping a cutscene where we meet Dahlia, and we're not going to see her again until, like, the... We technically wouldn't be seeing her until, like, the end of the game, um, which is a common theme with some of the characters in this. Uh, we've got to go up here, and we have to solve our first puzzle, which allows us to go into the basement. Let's see if we can get a certain trick here. We did. We got it. Uh, so if you get the camera angle change on the frame um, right there, right as you approach the Iron Lungs controls, you can bypass the note right there and you can just save like a second or two, just not needing to read the note. And the solution to the Iron Lung is always 113355, or sometimes you can, or if you really want to, you can do 553311. And you get a key. And it never made sense to me why that key just kind of drops out you know, gracefully when it probably would be, you know, with all that built up pressure, it would probably just shoot into the wall. But, you know, it's a video game. Don't question it too hard. Uh, we get the key and we're going to go down here. And something I'm going to explain really quickly here about the game's controls, because we're probably going to see maybe a couple issues with this in a second. But, um... So this game does not use tank controls. This uses a form of 2D controls, which you're probably familiar with from like the Silent Hill 2 run, um, Silent Hill 4, and you know, that typically translates to it being kind of fast. It's pretty one-to-one. -one. It's like, all right, it works. That being said though, um, in terms of it being a mandatory control, because at the very least, I understand why in Silent Hill 2 it could be it could take a minute to like get used to in terms of holding on to your direction so you know you don't lose you know kind of the angle you're running at but in terms of this you know analog uh 2d camera control kind of movement uh i feel silent hill 4 does a much better job uh, it gives you a better grace period between camera angles 
to, you know, make sure your can uh, your uh, your sticks in the right direction and you get the optimal movement. Uh, in Origins, right on the frame where a camera angle changes is when uh, your stick, you know, direction changes. So, and the problem with that is if you move the stick just like a millimeter, you're going to go flying in that direction. So sometimes on some of these stairs, uh, something that really hurts in a run is you might get stuck going between two camera angles. Like you're going upstairs and suddenly you're going back down there. And then you have to kind of do this big kind of run up in order to like get out of the cycle because the game doesn't know what to do with itself. And hopefully we don't see too much of that going forward. Ah, Anyways, you. You and your devil son. apparently we're a devil son. Uh, that woman's voice you're hearing is Travis's mother. Um, like I said, uh, the story uh, is very inconsequential, despite being a prequel to Silent Hill 1. So uh, you don't need to really worry too much uh, about, you know, what's actually going on. I will say, though, as a little tidbit, is that she is the reason why he has asthma. Anyways, we're now back into normal world. We're going to go pick up a key from this bed. And I just, you know, used good movement right there, as in like, you know, holding onto the stick in the proper direction in order to get optimal movement there. But, you know, if I were to say kind of just flinch a little bit, we'd be kind of spinning in circles. Um, I think another thing you might be noticing as well, and uh, you may be a little too overtly familiar with it, um, if you've played this casually, but uh, these places are big. Like, the hospital is like simple enough, but like once we get to the sanitarium, things kind of, you kind of go up and down and then you go across the building and it becomes uh, really easy to get lost. Um, however, uh, fortunately or unfortunately in some cases, uh, I have this route tattooed into my brain. So if I decide not to run this game for five months, I'm still going to know how to get through this. Uh, that's the effect of playing this game for nearly two months, trying to crack, uh, you know, item manipulation. Anyways, we just picked up bullets. These are very, very important for the route. They kind of already were before, and beforehand, um, on the old, like, improved route, we wouldn't be picking up these bullets right next to the door. But we need them. We need as many bullets as we can feasibly and reasonably get along this route. I will do a better job of explaining it once we get to the boss battle of this area, which is, of course, for Travis's mother. But once again, we're kind of going back to this kind of wing of the sanitarium, and we're going downstairs, going into the basement again, so that we can go to the other side of the hospital, but actually, I believe first, before we go to the other side, we're going to need to we're gonna need to go up, but there's a door that's locked. Um, if you remember correctly, we flushed a toilet to get a key down here, which is a little gross considering Travis never washes his hands. Um, eek. Kind of gross, and especially now, too, because look at the sludge. Disgusting. I've worked in sanitation before, and uh, this makes me cringe. So yes, Travis is certainly a person. He's very bland, he has asthma, and he reaches into gunk for keys. All right, we dodged a hit there. So on the improved route from last time this category was on Hotfix, we, uh, uh, or at least I did, there is an ampule on that shelf, and we picked that up so we can man manage good health after the boss battle. Turns out now, we don't need that. Hmm, what do you think we do? So, we're going to go back upstairs uh, t towards to where, like, the Iron Lung was. Uh, there is a records room. Or, no, it's an interview room. Uh, the room we went into that was on this floor, on the first floor, where we entered the mirror and we got the shotgun. That's the records room. My bad. I know how to run through it, but I don't remember names sometimes. Forgive me. And it's in this room we're also going to see, you know, uh, a part of this uh, a difference in the route. We're going to unlock this door. And typically what we used to do is we used to run straight for the mirror. 
Uh, Travis, please pick them up. We gotta pick up the bullets. There's a pack of bullets right there. You hear Travis's mother again. Kind of can't learn anything. And before we go, pick up this katana. This is very important for the final boss later. So now we only have one more thing we really need to do in this section of the game. Um, and that is we need to find an artifact which allows us to get to Travis's mother. Um, it's locked in a doctor's office and we need to go find the key. And thankfully we're on our way to go do that. Uh, are we gonna get the camera angle change? No, we're not. Ah. See, there's a chance either you'll get a proper camera angle change there or uh, the game just kind of decides to hang on it. It's, uh, it's kind of a crapshoot, really, uh, whether or not the game decides to do that. Um, you can almost kind of think of it as like a, a, its own little mini game. Like, ooh, what are the odds? All right, so. Oh, yep, there it is. See, I did not move the stick, or at least I tried not to, but for some reason, he decided he was gonna try to go back down. But thankfully, I adjusted before um, the camera angle changed again, and I would have been wasting a few more seconds. Uh, real quick, as an aside, uh, at this puzzle, this is really bizarre. Chat, tag yourself. Which baby doll are you? Personally, uh, I'm the red one because this puzzle makes me very angry. Uh, if you're learning this run, the hitboxes on these mouths and picking up these pills are atrocious. Like just, just atrocious. Like, bad. Um, they're way too small for no real good reason. Once you get enough good practice, you can get through it quickly there. So yeah, I'm the red one. Which one are you? Are you the Italian one? Are you the one with the knives? Hmm. So from doing that puzzle, we now have the doctor's office, <laughs> the doctor's office key, by key. So now we can get our, uh, our artifact, which allows us to get to the boss battle. So we're kind of having a downtime moment. There's a lot, so like you're, you're seeing that, yeah, this is the result of this being kind of very back and forth, very, you know, dungeon-like. Um... Love the little mustache. Yes, that mustache is evil. I'm the evil looking one. Ooh. I'm liking that you guys are identifying with the evil baby doll puzzle. It's, uh, it's, it's great. Very inexplicable, though. <laughs> Just very, very bizarre. Um leave the context in order to solve that puzzle is you have to go into a room down the hall and you kind of have to match up colors with uh, specific doors and specific patients that are locked up. Anyways, here's the doctor's office. Back out of his note. Just go right in. And we're going to pick it up. It is called the Jocasta Artifact. You wouldn't know that though because it's in uh, Japanese and I have to mention that the only reason this is the Japanese version isn't because the text is, is faster, it's just because it's the version I had access to. AKA, I spent $15 buying it on the Japanese uh, PSN store. Which, by the way, is, is kind of criminal how much money uh, like they are charging for this. Like, yeah, $15. But anyways, you're hearing sad guitar music. Uh, this reminds me, I, uh, I say a lot that this makes me think of um, the song Loss of a Loved One by The Residents off their God and Three Persons album. And you hear the Lori Amat Greek chorus sing out to you, oh, it's such a sad part. Because this is supposed to be emotional and sad, but kind of left a little confused because, you know, everything is as, uh, is as flat as uh, flatbread from Subway. But anyways, now it's time for things to be different. So before we use the Jocasta artifact and we go in, it's time to reload, like pretty much load up on the shotgun 
and it's time to use the Jocasta artifact. Here we go in the boss battle. In the old route, what we needed to do is we needed to do risky kat katana strats. Uh, but now, all we need to do is just do 11 bullets. So, uh, this room is kind of infamous. Oh, oh, I did that on accident. That's bad. My bad. It's okay. So, um, it's pretty infamous that on this hotfix, and I, I don't know, uh, I apologize to Ek for this accusation of sorts, but whenever he's involved with an Origins run uh, the past couple of times, that boss fight always seemed to go wrong with Katana strats. There is a glitch where if you manage to try to hit Travis's mother with a weak attack, you kind of get a one-hit KO and you just die. Uh, it has happened to Punchy, and it has happened to me previously on a an event called King of the Silent Hill, which you all might finally remember, and uh, you might all remember that Origins was very funny that day. But the old strat is we uh, basically, after item manipulation, is we would do two powerful overhead swings, and then we would, and then we would take a gas hit. We'd stand still and take a hit, and then right afterwards we'd heal with the ampule we picked up in the basement, and then we'd hit with a couple weak attacks, and then that was the boss fight. And exiting the fight, you had your health kit, you had your health drink, and you had your 80% health. So it all works out, and that's what you needed to do previously. But uh, Safarel, who is now... Oh, Ooh, I got hit. I didn't mean for that. That sucks. Um, he has, in his current world record run... Um, strats with the shotgun so we don't have to take any risk with travis's mother and that means we never have to see that glitch ever again so three cheers for that so where are we supposed to go next well we picked up a ticket uh, this allows us access to a theater not a movie theater but a theater for uh, performance, uh, watch plays, and uh, we're gonna see in a, a few minutes uh, what exactly uh, they're putting on, what kind of show they're running. So as we're making our way towards there, um, something you may also notice is that um, surprisingly, uh, it's kind of open world here, like you know, like some of the classic Silent Hill games, because Silent Hill 3 got a little more linear, and Silent Hill 4 is also a very linear experience overall. Uh, but here it kind of goes back to the design of Silent Hill 1 and 2, though it's a little more congested because this is a- Oh! Oh my gosh. Oh, I didn't expect that. Whoops. Did he turn me around? He turned me around. Ah, uh, what a meanie. All right, that's what I was talking about earlier about QTE grabs. Uh, enemies, uh, usually if you have low stamina, uh, will decide to engage in QTE attacks on you. And all you have to do is you have to get through the QTE attack. I hope that one hit by the cow enemy doesn't offset our RNG, because then I'll have to do backup. I just realized there's not really many opportunities for you to really pick up other healing items other than the hotel. There it is. We're good. All right. Yeah, you don't want to get into any QTE prompts because it actually makes the RTA. The RTA still runs while you're going through all that. So it's a pain. Uh, there's a boss fight later uh, that is really bad with it. And... Uh, Hopefully we get lucky and uh, we don't get the worst case scenario with it. But since we got hit with the cow, we're actually taking slightly different um, stamina routing a little bit because he's getting tired at different points than I kind of expect him to. So it's going to be kind of interesting, or at least for me, because typically I kind of expect the run to go a certain way. Ooh, what a dodge. 
Anyways, we're going up here. Turns out uh, a pyramid head uh, ripoff enemy uh, known as the Butcher um, uh, comes up here and brings um, an enemy over here. Uh, we're going to just do that for safety. Um, something I'm doing here is similar to uh, the burning house strats of uh, we're going to pause buffer while we're dropping down the hole because you have to wait through an animation of a Travis just getting up which wastes time. Um, but yeah, we're, we're following the butcher as part of our way to get to the theater here, and hey, we've made it. So it's time to put down our ticket, which unlocks the door, and we're in. And uh, I don't know if any of you noticed uh, what uh, is playing, but apparently they're putting on a show uh, for uh, Shakespeare's Tempest. See the posters right here as well. Let's watch Tempest. Oh, wait, never mind. There is no Tempest playing. It's abandoned. We meet Lisa right there, and that's... Uh, and somehow she got in here before we did. Um, I don't know where she got her ticket, but... Eh, I'm gonna shrug my shoulders. Hence, hang not, not on my garments. garments. Which is a very, you know, quaint old English way of saying L plus ratio plus... Don't talk to me. Oh, what am I doing? I just had a brain fart there for a second. My bad. We're introduced to marionette enemy enemies right here. Um, they are really no different than any other enemy, really. Uh, they also have their own QTE grab uh, attack, which is kind of annoying as well. Uh, they kind of pull you up, try to choke you. Um, but yes, we just picked up a slab right there. All right, chat, I need you to buckle up. We're about to perform something really difficult. Really, really difficult. Like, this is one of the hardest tricks out of any of these games. I mean that. I mean it. It's, um, you know, like, if you fail, you're, not only are you going to crash the game, but um, your PSP is going to burst into flames. And you're and you're never gonna play it again. You've ruined your copy of Origins forever. This is serious ramifications right here, and I hope that we don't mess up. So we need to make our way over here in order to perform our wonderful, very, very difficult glitch. Uh, before we do that, we grab this energy drink that spawned right here, thanks to our item manipulation. And here we go, chat. Pay attention to what I'm doing. It's hard stuff. Pray for me. All right. Anyways, um, well, doors unlocked. Uh, I just lied to you. Um, this is one of the easiest glitches to do in any of these games. Um, your, your console's not going to get bricked. There's no crashes. Um, as far as I'm aware, that skip has been a, in uh, Silent Hill Origin speedrunning as long as um, Silent Hill Origin speedrunning has existed. Which is um, pretty interesting, because that was like year of release this got discovered. So, you know, that's just been around ever, ever since then. So shout outs to the one person who noticed that um, a glitch like that gets performed. Uh, you're a legend. But now what's our objective? Uh, how do we proceed forth? Well, in order to get to the boss battle in uh, the theater, we need to actually put on a show of t for Tempest. Uh, I hope you all like Shakespeare. Uh, I know some people who don't like Shakespeare, um, who also run this game. And they're always, and uh, she's always so dissatisfied with that. <laughs> oh, what are you doing? I didn't point the stick that way. That happened last time I played Origins on Hotfix. Suspicious. Anyways, uh, we've collected light bulbs. Uh, in order to now put on our show, we need to 
do a little bit of a repair. Uh, this is a math puzzle. I don't exactly remember what the whole step process is. It's like A plus B, but must be greater than C something. Uh, but the order is 500, 125, 750, and then we end with 250. Oh, my bad, I don't ever do that. Flip of the thumb. And we just flick on the switch and we're off. The lights are on, you hear it rumbling. That's the Caliban. That is the, uh, the creature that is actually in Tempest. It is actually based on something. Uh, if we had our flashlight on, by the way, if we, uh, left that room, uh, that straitjacket guy would have immediately charged at us before we even noticed he was there. This game is very fun. So now we gotta make our way back to the stage. Uh, the fastest way of doing that is just going to these steps, and you're gonna notice something very funny after I exit this room, uh, but, uh, right there is the other tablet we were supposed to pick up. Uh, because we did that glitch, we saved like a good several minutes. We didn't have to go through the whole process of coming out here to grab that. Yeah, we're enjoying the, the nice beats. It's great. Oh, gotta pick up the note. For some reason, a lot of the times on uh, this uh, switch, uh, it defaults to no. I don't have any explanation for that. And uh, let's get a good hit on a um, good hit on this uh, control panel. Uh, Something you might notice about a few different things like doors and, you know, this panel where we're setting up props for a mirror other world realm to enter uh, is uh, hitboxes can be a little weird and we take advantage of that. Sometimes it's a little awkward. You kind of have to shove Travis's face in the middle of a set of double doors for him to notice that, oh yeah, these are doors that must enter. And other times you can enter a door when you're like nowhere close to it. And you could be on the furthest end of that control panel and you'll bring this up. And uh, if this idea of setting up a stage for a play uh, is familiar uh, to you, uh, if you're familiar with other Silent Hill games, uh, this kind of thing happens in Downpour. Though, I'll be honest, I kind of prefer it here. I think the environments uh, that you create are more interesting and um, definitely cooler to, to witness. Uh, there's more tiny details, like I don't know if you noticed in that tree where we picked up this office key that we're about to use, uh, but there were hands reaching out of the ground that represented roots, which is cool. Whereas in Downpour, it's fairly nondescript, and it's just kind of a stormy forest, and it's a little dark, and you can't see stuff. It's a half-decent effect, but, like, Origins did it first, and it did it better. Not that, uh, you know... Um, I should uh, uh, give Origins my highest praises, uh, but uh, that's neither here or there. <laughs> but anyways, we're going to continue uh, playing Prop Master and Stagehand, and we're going to go repair the control panel so we can get our final prop. Did we get it? Did we get it? We did. Neato. Anyways, we go over here and we are creating a cave set. And then by doing this, uh, we fix that switch. There is a furry sack on our rope. As it turns out, that's the Caliban. That's what it's represented by on stage. But are you ready to see what it actually looks like? Looks like that. And ooh, he's about to charge us. Anyways, it's time, my bad. Uh, we need to use our gun here. Typically what we do here is we need to shoot it with 13 bullets, but I accidentally used a bullet earlier, so we're gonna be shooting it instead with 12. Kinda do the same strats as before, because as it turns out, going into your inventory uh, actually saves time on IGT. Uh, because IGT pauses whenever you enter here. Okay, now we're out of ammo, and just switch. Oh. That's not the best RNG, but that's okay. And he's stumbling. He's done. What we typically need to do is we need to shoot the Caliban with 13 bullets. 
Randomly, however, he won't die to the 13 bullets, and then we'll just need to take one weak hit with the um, the katana, and he's done for. Or, in other cases, if you shoot him with all 13 bullets, he goes down. That is also a deviation of the route. And typically, uh, what we used to do is we used to pick up a second katana that's in uh, an actor's dressing room. But, you know, because of discovery and iteration, we don't have to do that anymore. And because we even, because we used one swing of this, um, our katana is gonna be good enough for the final boss later because we are not using this katana at all on anything else. I'm just kind of holding it for the sake of holding it. So, You've been noticing that we've been picking up little triangle pieces. Those are pieces of a thing called the flowers. Now, um, I don't remember every single detail about what the flowers entails, but the flowers is actually based on a, uh, a real occult concept in, uh, in demonology. And as far as I'm aware, uh, its use in this game is not really reflective of how it's used in Silent Hill 1, nor in, you know, demonology. So we're just kind of picking up pieces of a thing that doesn't operate um, how it's supposed to, and it, for some reason they're based off their collection is based off of mostly Travis's memories, which is a very weird thing to mingle, like a very personal story with just you know, oh my gosh, Alessa, we got to uh, we have to create uh, the god of our cult, so sort of deal. Uh, if you noticed, by the way, as I exited a bookstore, yes, a bookstore, uh, we ended up uh, picking up the assault rifle. Um, this is technically our last deviation of the route. Um, well, actually, we have one more. Uh, we're going to need this little ammo pack that's right here in the general store. That's, you know, having a blowout sale or just, you know, clo it's closing soon. Everything's on discount. You know, get on down there. Like it was your uh, your old Sears. And we're going to continue picking up these energy drinks. A lot of the energy drinks. Um, we've drank about like five or six of those. And I gotta be gotta be honest. Uh, I think everybody's made the same observation. Uh, this is not healthy. This is not how to treat uh, your asthma. And uh, after this, uh, Travis is probably going to pass out. But we picked up a key from a dead marionette, like, you know, puppet enemy, and it goes to a motel. And as it turns out, Travis met, remembers this hotel, uh, motel. He's been there before, you see. Um, and, you know, kind of like going everywhere else, it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a walk, a bit of a jog. You know, keep drinking our, uh, our balls, ginger ale energy drink. Those are actually quite good, actually. So is their root beer and their cherry cola. Love the guarana. No, no caffeine. Um, but we're at the motel, and we're about to skip a cutscene where young Travis is with his father. So yes, the main uh, whole bit with, uh, with this part of the game is that we're dealing with Travis's father and not his mother. Uh, we're going to go up these stairs. We just pick up a key we need in order to go to the other world in order to get to the next spot because a lot of places in the motel uh, is blocked off and you have no access to it. Uh, we're going to run past these uh, these two. I have. There used to be a lot of worry about um, um, QTE happening right there, but as long as you have good stamina and you run at the edge and like run past them like that, you should not be grabbed. You should be quite solid. I haven't seen them do that to me since, like, 2022. But now we're in the other world, once again. And uh, in order to proceed forward, we're going to need to grab a key, which allows us to get into the main office of the motel. And that is only found uh, in this kind of... Um, how do I best describe it? It's like a, um, you all seen the movie Psycho and, um, G 
Janet Lee's character, Marion Crane, is like in her uh, in her motel room, and um, and like uh, Norman Bates is like uh, is like watching her and all that, and he has like a little compartment that sort of thing. There's a hallway that's kind of like that. Um, our our key to proceed forth is in a Norman Bates kind of style, you know, secret area of the motel, which is. Um, interesting? I think there's like an attempt at war that the people who run the motel aren't uh, the best of people, but again, uh, we don't really interact with anything involving that, so it doesn't matter. Discard it. Just don't question it. We're good. We are Travis Grady. We are chugging energy drinks, and we are, uh, we're, we're eating Doritos. Yeah, voyeuristic. That's that's a very good way of describing it. So once we get the key, we have a, a we, that's the office key. Uh, we're gonna go back to the the main hub of the motel in uh, just a second. Uh, let's run past these little piggyback men. Will we get grabbed? We will not. Good for us. You can run this on Emulator or Harmful Breeze. Uh, and as a matter of fact, there is a script for the in-game timer, which is incredibly helpful. And it it's a uh, very good way of uh, discovering that some of these tactics um, save time for the run. And as a matter of fact, I will say about... Um, about this run, or at least the UFO category of this run, is that it is a very easy run. So um, if you want, it's the probably the easiest Silent Hill run you could learn. Um, I believe if you also ask a fellow UFO runner, um, Abby's Corner, she will also back me up on that and say that, hey, this is, this is easy. But we're on any percent, and any percent is a bit more more skill based, but you know, with time, you should get pretty good at it. We're fighting the butcher. Oh no, I kind of forgot. Gotta fight big pyramid head. Oh, that's not the luck I expected. He's gonna grab us. Oh no, he's not. All right, we're lucky. Anyways, one more hit and he's down. And because of us uh, managing our health with that med kit, because he's always going to hit us uh, on our most optimal um, procedure of hit, of taking him down, which is just keep on doing the the heavy hits where pull down the button. Um, yeah, you, you'll take him down, and we are able to get our last energy drink. No, Travis, young Travis, you can get no money for the pinball machines. But that is the last energy drink we'll be picking up. Now, you may be asking, why do we not use the energy drink while we're indoors? Um, considering, well, we do uh, manage to slow down quite often. And while that may be true, uh, and it can provide a temporary fix for certain spots, by the way, uh, that's a very, uh, very easy to remember uh, laundry puzzle. Just remember it as a clock. Uh, but... I lost my train of thought. That's bad. I apologize. Um, <laughs> I have to laugh now. Whoops. I got distracted by the, the weirdest, you know, laundry machine I've ever seen. Uh-oh. <laughs> I'm going to throw my hands up, shrug my shoulders, and, you know, continue with a smile. Um, but yeah, we're going to continue forth here. We're back in the other world after uh, collecting, you know, uh, a well-needed key. Um, here we go. Um, so we need to pick up heart. This is a vital item. It contains our, our way forward in order to get the boss. Um, 
Here we go. We're getting this little tiny knife. Uh, very fun. Uh, fun, fun use of this one. It's actually a key. And, um... Uh, another usage in Silent Hill that reminds me, of, like that makes me think, like, like whenever I do this, is uh, is the knife order puzzle kind of thing in the um, the Shepherd household in Homecoming. But yeah, uh, you just stab the door and you're going in. And right here, we need to pick up this ammo. We're we're going. Anyways, uh, we're we're gonna. Whoops, I did not mean to pick that up. But we're gonna drop down the hole and we're gonna pause buffer dropping down the hole on this one. We have like one more spot we get to do that on soon. And that is one I've actually made a discovery on. Um, actually doing uh, practice for this. Um, but yeah, we have a heart. Um, something you may not have noticed because we didn't walk into that part of the room, but the room that connects us to the Norman Bates hallway has a, uh, a vice. And we get to crush things. So, uh, what do we do in this part? Uh, well, a lot of this part kind of deals with Travis's father, uh, being upset that he's not with his wife and she's institutionalized. So, his heart is broken. Uh, I I think you know where this is going. Chat, let's break his heart. It's a wedding ring. Haha, -ha, very subtle. Very, very subtle. Now, where do we... What use do we have of a wedding ring? Well, um... Well, it's kind of it kind of operates the same way as like other items used throughout this game. Um, you use it basically in in terms of a very. It's, it's basically a key. Um, what is it a key for? Um, well, there's a little mini puzzle that you can solve through contextual clues. Uh, one of them is on a calendar. If you uh, looked into the Norman Bates peephole of Travis's father's room. Um, you can notice it on your lucky coin, and uh, you get a clue if you examine the ring. We cannot examine the ring though, because like, and get that information because uh, it's all in Japanese. But rest assured, um, if you're playing in English, you will you will see it. So here it is. It is actually this date, six twelve um, sixty one, and we insert the ring here and key. Once again, we get the sad part music with the piano and uh, something that's nice. Key to heart. Yeah, that's that's pretty good, actually. I didn't think of it as that way. I get so hung up on break his heart. But yeah, and then it reveals a wedding ring, which is key to the heart. Aww. But that music is very short-lived because we need to go back to the other world for that. So here's a kind of different part uh, coming up. This is the worst boss battle in the game uh, because of the RNG of our favorite thing, uh, QTEs, our favorite time waster, our favorite dealer of damage, no matter how well you do at the prompt. It is going to be Travis's father. See, nobody. Oh, we got hit with the T-pose, because I wanted to reload right here. And look at that. Look at him in the bottom left corner. T-posing. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I got that to happen on my last uh, stream of practice with this, and I burst out laughing, and I hope that that was as funny as it did. I hope it was as funny to me, uh, uh, like, for you, as for you. I can't word things right. Anyways, here's how we change in the route. Rather than unloading all of our shotgun ammo throughout the whole game, we just unload all of our assault rifle ammo. And then... And he's dead. Yeah, but. 
and that's Travis's father. Technically, it, I believe it's slightly faster if you did all shotgun, but we don't have the ammo for it. So we kind of go that route, but it, it kind of equates to about as much time saved. Just for safety, we're gonna pick up uh, this little extra bit of assault rifle ammo and an ampule. And here's the final piece of the, of the flaros. Here's how you solve it. Pick up the third piece, turn twice. First piece, turn twice. Second piece, turn twice. This priest turn once. We've solved it. We've made the Flaros. That's apparently a bad thing. We've unleashed Alessa's power. It's been kept in the Flaros. Oh boy. Even though I'm pretty sure you can't really unleash Alessa's powers. And also, I don't think there is a proper manifestation of her powers that's like a demon that's in it. I, this game makes no sense. Ugh. Anyways, we're gonna we're gonna skip. We're now in the final stretch, everybody. You ready to go to the final boss? You ready to kick some butt? Let's go. Pause buffer. Uh, use an energy drink here because he's just gonna run slow. Right there. So what happens typically is when you skip that cutscene, you start running. Travis will start walking for a second or like doing a small jog and then it but if you've got pause buffer into the inventory uh you will be able to much quicker you know deal with all that it saves you again like a second like other pause buffers um now our next objective is we have to run where are we running to We're running to the green lion which is in fact uh the the uh the thrift store you go to silent hill one where you go to the other church, as Dahlia described it after you finished Akamilla the first time. Um, all right, that's all of our energy drinks. We have drank them all, no more. So yes, we gotta go to the Green Lion, and so yeah, that's that's where we need to go. Uh, apparently, um, things are happening over here, and we need to watch it happen. Uh, we just kind of avoid everybody who's right here. It's all cool. Here it is. It's the most normal looking building right here. And here we go. We're going in. And there's a hole here. It's not gone. This literally takes 46 seconds RTA to crawl through. I am not joking. This is, this is the mandatory crawl section. This is the part where you scroll Twitter. This is also the spot where you got one more last, probable like little bit of time save you can get before you have to deal with the RNG of the final boss. Are you ready for it? You're already familiar with the tactic, which by the way, I have to basically um, give credit to a uh, previous UFO ending world record holder for this game, Nick Luz, for the inspiration for the pause buffers, because he did that in his runs and he ran on emulator. Uh, pause buffer here, because you, yeah, you save your time. What typically happens right there is that Trav, you have to watch an animation of Travis getting up. So just pause buffer right there, it's all good. Final boss, baby. It's time to unload what we have left. No more of that. We're gonna unload our assault rifle. This is not uh, on our previous route. What we needed to do, it was we just needed to get out the katana and just brute force um, Hanzo steel on him. Ooh, I heard the hit. So now we've unloaded our ammo. It's time, the power of anime. Let's go. Technically, you want him to hit you uh, because he can stun you and uh, by going to inventory you can get out of the stun animation faster uh, which is a little harder to get out of during this part come on come on there it is time hey, gee. there we go and real quick before i show you our results screen i gotta remind you he still has the toaster in his pocket and he's getting his truck back. Wow. I'm not going to show you putting him putting the key in the ignition, though. No, that's pointless. 
Anyways, 39.15. Pretty good, I must say. GG. GG. Thank you for doing the run. That was pretty good. Yeah. No, no, no curses no memes. You, happening yeah. here. No memes. I mean, fun memes, but not uh, not yeah. dying in one shot randomly or having a room yeah. uh, randomly softlock. Yeah. How does it feel to see an Origins run where you're involved not go wrong? Like, not go wrong? It's nice. It's a cursed game, but it's nice that it actually worked out well. <laughs> <laughs> Really quick before we head on off, do you have any uh, shout outs you want to give? And uh, if anyone wanted to find you, where can they find you? All right. Uh, you can find me at twitch.tv slash exterior Emma. I typically do horror games. Um, I may be more known for Silent Hill stuff. I also do a little bit of Clock Tower. Hopefully, in the future, I can do more Clock Tower games and horror games. And sometimes I play the real horror games like Waterworld for the Super Nintendo. And um, uh, I'd like to say, uh, Eck, thank you for uh, inviting me and having me uh, show off Origins. It's always a pleasure to show off runs that are kind of underrated. Um, of course. Despite people having, you know, uh, growing pains with it. But And um, I would also like to say um, uh, a great job to DJ Rebirth and to Nico Hart and to Cave for... Uh, all their wonderful work tonight. And also, I gotta say, uh, I, another reason why this is great for me to show this off is that um, uh, back when I did all the discovery for this uh, energy drink manipulation stuff, it was kind of a rough time for me. And uh, I loved that I, at the time, I wasn't very active. The last thing I did was King of the Silent Hill that ended kind of sadly when I died. It was a bit of a disaster. And... Um, it's through that I, I'm more active with the speed running. I heard a lot of very great and encouraging words from people in this community that I'm happy to hear. I am so happy for this community. You know, glad that new games are coming out. Everybody works together and is always striving for, you know, just greatness. It's, it's a fun thing to be doing. And, uh, yeah, I'd like to thank this whole community for always making these Silent Hill things happen. All right. Thank you yeah. once again for the run. And, well, pretty good stuff. Uh, that being said, if anyone does want to find Exterior Emma, uh, we do have the link in Twitch chat where you can follow them there. All righty. That being said, chat, we are wrapping it on up for the night. Thank you all for watching this episode of Speedruns in the Crypt. It was fun diving into the world of Silent Hill games, especially as we're getting more coming on forward. And you know what? Maybe this year we might even see more new Silent Hill speedruns since more games are announced to come out. Uh, I have been your host, Ictisis. I've planned a lot of these GDU horror shows, and hopefully we'll plan many more. I'll be back in about two weeks with more spooky games to show you, so I'll be there then, and hope to see you there. Have a wonderful rest of the day or night, and take it easy. Have a good one.